Do you believe in the magic of bass fishing? Do you believe that this thing we call bass fishing is our happy place? Do you believe? I feel like uh, I'm doing a speech. Like I'm I a th- politician. I thought Do you were doing a love and spoonful I- song. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe that bass fishing is all about fun and good times? Well, if you believe all those things, you are in the right place. It's Wednesday night. I'm your host, Pat Remwick, and welcome to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Yes, you are in the right place. You found us. You found us. It's pretty cool. There's new people finding us all the time. I love it. But but don't knock at the door at inappropriate hours. That's true. You know what I'm saying. We'll take care of that in the morning. <laughs> this guy doesn't wear pants during the day. <laughs> hey, the, I'm going to tell you again, and, and it's seriously, it's like a broken record here on Wednesday nights, but we get super excited to bring you the best professional bass fishermen in the galaxy. To you, Bass Fishing Galaxy, Wednesday nights. Here it is, and tonight we have, for the first time in a long time, the man-child prophecy, Indiana's very own, who's your daddy, Jacob Wheeler, the champion. Jake Wheeler's coming back to Stray Cass. Ding. Um, yeah. Former child actor as well. <laughs> he, he is. Yeah. He, absolutely. And the truth is he turned down that role, but we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that whole thing. <laughs> Speaking of getting into it, uh, my cohort over here on the right, the Bearded Wonder, has three canaries and a chipmunk living in that beard right yep. there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan Popcorn. Whitaker. What's up? It's Whitaker. I got to kick him out, though. You got to cut who, it down. What, the uh, canaries in the... Yeah. forgot what my face looked like. I might I might show it. Do the, Shave the whole damn thing off. I might do it. I double dog dare you. Jen will let me, but... She won't even know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she won't. She'll be like, who the hell is this guy? Just go to Party City and get like a little beard and put it on (laughs) for when you go home at night. Be more comfortable. I'll just get the Groucho glasses. What's your happy place? What's my happy place? What's your happy place in bass fishing, Ryan? Duckweed and docks. Duckweed and docks. Oh, that does sound happy, doesn't it? Yes, sir. That wooden does. wooden posts and docks, <laughs> to be more specific. Wow, wooden posts, old little scabbies on there and good yeah, a stuff. Scattered, yeah. maybe some milfoil, a little duckweed. That that yeah. is a happy place. Yes, you, sir. You know, uh, you know who my happy place is? Who's your happy place? JP High! <laughs> the hip hop fisherman. He's dynamite. JP High. What's up, dude? What up? What's going on? Welcome to the big show. Good evening. Hey, JP. He's not wearing a coat. It's summer. I know. It was it was hot as the dickens in here. Yeah. La- last. Uh, He's like the groundhog. Last no week. No coat. Summer. And he had a he had a hoodie on, full garb, I hoodie, know. and a neck guardier. And, the, and and but today he's he's wearing no pants and a shirt. That's it. <laughs> it's weird over here. It's kind of weird. It's kinda, <laughs> JP, do you used to play bass fishing video games? I did. Do you yeah. remember the Sega one? Oh, yeah. Dude, so how amazing is the structure in the Sega bass fishing video games? I wish it was really like that I, in right? real, real lakes. Yeah. The docks Have are you, always perfect. I, I wish you could see them, too, when you... And it's like you're fishing yeah. those damn walls and stuff, yeah, you know, you, like... you see the shadow and you just know there's uh, a big one. Have you ever yeah. had a Sega bass fishing dream? No. I have. Like, that was, like, what I was fishing. And I was underwater. I have underwater dreams a lot. Did you have a tension meter, too? <laughs> Do you have a line tension meter? <laughs> ding, 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 so, ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Turn the rod right. <laughs> I, I, ha- I have had a dream where I thought I was a Carolina rig. Just the bait on the end, and like that was the whole dream. I'm That's just, not unusual. It's like a uh, metaphor for your life, the yes. old ball and chain. I'm just a Carolina rig of life. Just being dragged through <laughs> junk. Just hoping, being dragged through the grass. To get bit. <laughs> Speaking of dragging through the junk, we're dragging this guy through the junk right here. Uh, producer... Extraordinaire. He's got a punk rock band in his brain between both ears. He's Andrew. El- Wait, stop a minute. Hold on. Strong song choice. I yes, that was amazing. <clears throat> uh, Andy, why have I always hey, called you? <laughs> why have I always called you Andy the producer? And I've been missing this the entire time. You're more like you are Andy the engineer. Okay. Andy You're the an engineer. engineer by trade in real life in real life stuff. Like in real life happenings, right? And you drive the uh, you drive the damn soundboard over there. We do. 
Driving wait, that train. Wait, do we have train sound effects? No. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Andrew Ellenberger, the Ginger Ninja. Give it up for him right there. He's the engineer of this uh, whole damn thing. Producer, whatever the hell he is. Tandy Ellenberger over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, also tonight, coming aboard. Uh, we told you last week that we were pretty stoked that Bite Me Tackle uh, came aboard the uh the uh, stray cast train of sponsorships, engineer train. See the theme? Boom, right there. Brad Zullers from Bite Me Tackles coming on tonight. This guy is going to tell us a little. Uh, we're going to get the lead out. You know what I mean? We're going to get some yes, heavy, d- heavy duty lead. And uh, Brad's going to give us the uh, 411 on Bite Me Tackle, um, as well as the giant mega get the wheelbarrow kind of. <laughs> and how Bite Me Tackle. Giveaway. Tell them how to win, Ryan. How do they do it? It's real easy Wednesday nights. Just like and share the live Facebook feed. And hide your privates. Hi- do not make it private. Don't, yeah, don't make it private. Do not make it private. Because then it won't get in the randomizer. And, and that tonight, is true. Tonight for a bonus entry, Ooh. name your favorite Bite Me Tackle jig head. And we'll throw it in there twice. Wow. Okay. Yes, so you'll just, double entry. Yeah, just do that in the comments. <laughs> Wow! Double entry by JP High. Game over. Double bag it. The, so the so the whole deal is they they say their favorite bite me bait jig head, and then they also like and, like share. and share the feed on their own Facebook feed, and then they're entered at the end for a chance uh, to win bite me tackle mega hella uh lead get the lead out giveaway. Uh, ding. But <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> hey, so let's get to it. Bust a move. No, don't. Put the power poles down. We're coming right back with Jacob Wheeler. Ka-chow. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year, Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits it's called the Buzz Toad. Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. Uh, this bait here has got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out, it's pretty awesome. TH Marine Hydrowave H2 KVD Edition is a surefire way to ignite a feeding frenzy. The Hydrowave utilizes a sound emitting technology that imitates bait fish and other feeding fish below the surface that preys on the competitive nature of bass and other game fish to get you more bites. The Hydrowave is another way that TH Marine has you covered from transom to trolling motor.
go farther, get some Kevin Van Dam's line and lure. You can launch it a mile. Still going. Better stick to fishing. good pretty good pretty neat pretty neat welcome back to the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show this is stray cast outdoor cartoon television i'm pat renwick and uh, right now i'm uh, i'm pretty happy to bring to you bass fishing galaxy indiana's very own we're claiming them we're claiming them we're bringing to you the champion bass pro tour champion jacob wheeler yes <laughs> what up dude it's been, a, it's been a minute, man. It's, uh, it's been a minute, man. It's good to hear from from my fellow Hoosiers, and uh, man, I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a good feeling, man, to get it to get it done this last week. Yeah, we got like uh, sixty three of your oldest uh, and dearest friends are packed into this studio audience yeah. right now. <laughs> Len that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Lenny. Right there. There's Lenny. Remember Lenny from the Bass Club? He's over there. There's there's Bill, that guy from Walmart that likes to show you all his big fish pictures all the time he's over there too Sanko steve Bill, yeah Sanko like steve ever. yeah they're they're all here for you that's what i'm talking about man i uh i'll tell you what i've had a lot of great great memories of fishing in indiana and fishing a lot of the lakes and in, in, in the rivers man and just uh it's always great to, to spend time with you guys and and uh i tell you what you know you just you never forget your roots i was actually talking to a buddy of mine the last couple of days, uh, or yesterday, today, actually, and uh, you know, we just talking about our Wednesday night tournaments, man. Sure. And coming back down there where we used to fish the White River, and so like that, I'll tell you what, it was sort of cool because we were talking about that, and I'm like, man, you know, it's sort of crazy because you know you look up to them guys like Van Dam and everybody else I looked up to growing up, and now you have kids looking up to me, and I'm like, that's a weird feeling. Isn't like, it crazy? Just, yeah. It's a little different. I mean, and, and congratulations uh, on your victory. It's uh, you, you win wherever the hell you go, Jake. I don't know what the heck's going on, but you're you're, you're winning wherever you are, wherever you plant your feet. I, and I love it. I, I love it, man. But uh, yeah, let, really... speaking of roots, let's 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 take a look at this. Just uh, in, in retrospective here, a little bit of Jacob Wheeler history. Okay, um, we all like to count professional bass fishermen's money, so let's start there. Um, you, <laughs> you, you, you're, you've made almost two million bucks at this, Jacob. Okay, that's it's, that's pretty cool. All right. Yes, yes. Twenty nine top tens in your career here. Twenty nine top tens. That's pretty damn good. Okay. <laughs> you fished three Bassmaster Classics. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got six Force Wood Cups. You fished and you won one. The BFL All-American. You're a champion there. Two-time Ultimate Mash Fishing Champion. Um, it, it, keep, it keeps going. I mean, it, it's it's crazy, man. All you know is bass fishing. That's all you've ever it done. Is. That's mm -hmm. it. It is. I, I mean, that that is – there are very few professionals that that's – all they've done and you and i called you uh, basically the man child prophecy at the beginning of the show because you know you kind of were like a you know you're like a child actor you know like you started like you were just thrown into it dude they went to the uh, gary klein school of bass fishing yeah I, basically yeah. So, yeah i mean and minus the van and the sandwiches it's <laughs> <laughs> you're kind do you watch game of thrones you're like you're like uh you're like bran you know, I mean, that's, that's Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I take that, but yeah, hey. it's, it, it, it's been a, it's been a, a hell of a ride. There's no doubt about that. And it's like, uh, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you look back at, uh, you know, you look back at all that and it's just like, like how quick it has came through and, you know, starting fishing BFLs and then going from there, you know, and 
win an All-American. I just, I, I know, like, for me, it would have been, I, I feel like I talked about this all the time. If I wouldn't have won All-American, I, I don't feel like I'd be fishing professionally. Exactly. I, exactly. You know, so it's like, it's a crazy story in, in itself. So it's tough for me to, I look at that and I'm like, dang. So that's where I want to take you back to, okay? The, the date now, all right? Is May twenty second, two thousand eleven. Do you know what that date is? May twenty second, two thousand eleven. All American, right? That is the day after you won the All American. Mm-hmm. It's a day of big decisions for Jacob Wheeler, right? Oh, I, no doubt. I mean, that's that is a life changing day. Okay, the 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 nineteenth, twentieth, and twenty first were very big days because you sealed the deal, right? Absolutely. But that twenty second. That's where I want to go. I want to know back in the way back time machine. You know what I'm saying? I want Absolutely. To, I want to know what's in your brain on that day. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's sort of a tough deal because, like, I remember doing I remember doing a photo shoot that morning at, on the Red River, and uh, we did a photo shoot with Sean Ostruska, I think it's what you know, and and, uh, and yeah, and so we had we had um, I remember you know. Putting that check in the bank, hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's crazy. And at that point in time, I think I had two hundred dollars in my bank account. <laughs> uh, so I'm sitting there, and 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 I'm like, man, I like all I've ever wanted to do was fish. You know, it's all I ever wanted to do. It's all I ever really, really cared about. And 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 now I have this hundred thousand dollars. I have a bid into the FLW tour. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, you know, if I'm ever going to do this, it's now. And I had a call that fall, I remember, uh, right after that event, actually, before the, the, the Forcewood Cup, because I qualified for the Forcewood Cup winning the All-American. Right. And I remember Rapala jumped on board. They're like, hey, look, we want to sponsor you. We want to work with you. Um, Who and did Rapala, you said? You're going to fish a tour next year. We want we want to do this. And this is like you know a couple of days after. But like, I, I I knew at that point in time that was my shot. Like I, I, and, I and it was crazy because like I knew before that, like at the All American, like before I even made a cast, it was sort of a weird deal. I told this guy, I told this guy that I was with, um, who was my co angler, and I said, I said, man, look, I, I just got a feeling like things are, I'm like, man, like there's so many things that happened throughout, like th- throughout the last, like basically year and a half, three years of my life that like were like, if I wouldn't have caught this fish, I wouldn't have made it, or if I would have lost, if a co angler netted a fish and hook came out, I wasn't qualified for the regional and then I wouldn't. So there's so many things that I'm like, I just feel like this is meant to be. And it's like, okay, this is like before the all American even started. Okay. I'm with you. And I'm sitting there. And then the first day I end up, you know, having a really big bag and I'm leaving by like seven pounds. And then, so it was all of these things. And then I ended up going on to win it. And, and it, so it was just like a, I don't, it was like a weird feeling, but like, I, I'm not gonna say I knew it was hap- it was going to happen, but I had this like weird feeling that it, it was meant to be. And, and that it was going to happen. Like, I wasn't even nervous. I was nervous, don't get me wrong. It's that but funny feeling you hear about but, in bass fishing, the funny feeling. It was it was crazy. So, so like, I, I, I get to that point where I win, you know, $100,000 in the bank account. And, like, I, I knew that I, and there was not another thought in my mind what I was going to do. I was gonna okay, wait, let me place. stop you. Let me stop you right there. So, you just, you're, you're, you're how old? You're 20 or 19? 20. And you, and you put... A hundred thousand dollars in the bank as a twenty-year-old, and you can't tell me that you weren't already spending some of that money in your brain. You, you had to as a twenty-year-old. What were you going to spend it on? You, you know, I I didn't really. Sp- I was really frugal because I I knew like you know what um I, we didn't you know we didn't we didn't grow up with a whole lot you know in our family and so like I wasn't like it wasn't one of those things I was like hey look I'm you know, I'm still going to stay at the house I'm still going to stay at home a mom you're a smart dad. guy. And it, it was sort of one of those things for me, like, I seriously bought, like, one pair of shoes, like, brand new sh- pair of shoes, maybe, like, some clothes. And that was it. Damn, you're, was, you're good. I'd have had it spent. My, 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 that was it. Like, I was that lame kid that, like, like I we can't, like, I'm not going to, you know, we, we came from not not a whole lot. So, like, I knew that I had to make that last because I don't know, like, how long. $100,000 sounds like a lot. And Dude, years you're old, awesome. Okay, 20-year-old and you can do that? I had a tackle warehouse and Bass yeah, Pro didn't... Shop the, the, and, and, and Academy <laughs> Sports the you hell out of that. You didn't buy tackle? Yeah. I can't believe you didn't I, buy tackle. That's where I'm at. I bought, I bought tackle. No <laughs> All right. See, come but, on. But that's, like, I, I can always, like, throw that to the wayside. Cause now I'm, like, fishing professionally. So, like, 
<laughs> but like, but like then I was, I definitely bought tackle. So if I bought anything, I spent more money on tackle than anything. Okay. You deposited the check. Sorry to interrupt you. Things on your brain. That's where we were. Yeah. So like I deposited this check and I'm sitting there like, I know like, like this is my opportunity. Like I, I know like I probably won't have another opportunity like this. And I was just fortunate. Like I, there was no other mom thought in my mind that I was going to be a professional bass fisherman. I was so naive. But like I thought like, Hey, look, it's just like going to happen. And, um, you know, I had so many other companies that jumped on Rapala, uh, you know, to be one of them that's been with me from the beginning, uh, who jumped on board. And so like, you know, the next year, basically it, for those people out there, like basically it costs around 70, probably about seven, 60 to 70 thousand dollars to fish a full year on the FLW tour back then. Now, now it might be a little bit different, but with entry fees, I think that's what I factored up. And I ended up having sixty thousand dollars of that uh, from from companies all around, you know, Indiana, American Legacy Fishing Company, um, you know, a couple little mom and pop shops there in Indiana that that it basically helped me pay for it. So it was like it was a no brainer wow. at that point in time. Awesome, that's amazing. But, but but it was like that was that that was like the deal. Like if I didn't have number one that opportunity, then that then the opportunity that, that so many people would you know supported me. Like it would have been really tough. Yeah, dude. I mean, and wow. it all you you said it. It happened for a reason, and there it shows that the stars aligned. Okay, first off, you you put in the hard work and dedication to win the tournament. Okay, that's oh, yeah. b- bottom line. But then the community steps forward for you. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned the small tackle shops, the mom and pop stuff, or um, mm-hmm. you know even some of these bigger. Sixty thousand dollars is a lot of money. A lot. Okay, a I lot. mean. That's uh, that's crazy. People don't realize, especially for a twenty-year-old kid that just won, you know, one tournament and had like, you know, and and had an okay like high school fishing deal. Like I might have won like, you know, this or that. Right. So for companies to step out there for me, um, put their their their, you know, just put their head out there, neck out there for me. That like that obviously meant a lot, you know. And that was like, you know, not only you win a hundred thousand dollars, but like that that's like basically like I said, if I didn't have the companies that supported me, like I wouldn't even be fishing. I'd be like one year if I didn't have a good year. So how does that make you feel as a 20 year old? Okay. You're, you're getting these companies to invest large amounts of money in you wrap up, putting out some bucks, yep. man. Um, yeah. what, how does a 20 year old feel about the pressure that is involved with this evolution? Now that has come into Jacob Wheeler's life. Now you have to perform. What's the pressure? Yeah, like at that point in time, you know what's crazy? So like in my mind, like I didn't even think of like that. I just thought like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Like and and later on that year, I, I, I fished the, the Forcewood Cup. And when I fished the Forcewood Cup, it was at Washita, Scott Martin had won. You know, Scott Martin won. But I ended yep. up making the top twenty cut and ended up twelfth place in the Forcewood Cup. And so when I fished against some of the greats and some of the great anglers that had, had, had fished the FLW Tour, your Jason Christie's, um, your Scott Martin, your Brian Thrifts, those guys that I've, I felt like are, are great anglers and, and to still this day, you know, some of the best that ever played the game. Absolutely. I like I felt like, hey, look, maybe I, I can do this. Like it gave me that confidence of like, man, I think I could I could pot. I mean, they're obviously way better fishermen than I was, but you know, I'm going to take my butt whoopings day in and day out and no doubt, but maybe every once in a while I'm going to, I'm going to get a chance to, to get towards the top. And so that was a, that was a big deal, a confidence booster for me before I even started to, because I didn't commit to the FLW tour until after that event. That was the event that I'm like, all right, for sure. Like I knew I was already going to probably fish professionally and I was going to fish the FLW tour, but that event right there was like the event that like, gave me that extra step of confidence that I needed that like, Hey, look, these guys aren't invincible. They're still the best in the world and I'm still going to get plenty of boat weapons, but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's my opportunity. I knew like, you know, it, it could, it could happen. And you realize that they're humans. Now they've just, be- right. they've just become competitors. They've become peers. They put their pants on one leg at a time. Like you did, Absolutely you know, you right. realize that it's not superhero Kevin Van Dam. Now it's now, Kevin Van Dam with a target on his back. That's, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm being serious. That's how you are now you're, going to make a living. You're, you're 100% correct. And, and this is the thing is like, there's sort of a deal that I look back at, like, you know, I appreciate more from the companies that supported me, um, you know, starting out now 
even more than I did understood then. You know, like you look back and you're like, man, that they really looked out. And and you look at those anglers and you're like, man, you know, like like I had I had that like it was like that confidence, like man, you could, I could beat those guys. Like and not knowing any better, like not like they're still like, like you said, like they're they put your pants on just it's just the same as anybody else does. Right. But not knowing any better, like I, it was just like when you have that confidence, like that's the biggest thing I can give. And you can't like teach confidence. It's like a tough, like, you know, it's like a deal you either have or you don't. But once you build that confidence up in, 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 in someone that's going out there fishing professionally, like you can't tell them they're not going to do well. Right. Like it's like it, it's not going to work. Yeah, and, it, it, you can't. And on, on top of that, too, you talked about the pressure you felt with the sponsors backing you and stuff like that. I remember after you won the All American, they put you on the cover of the magazine, oh. and it said yeah. something like, "Next Forest Wood Cup champion." They're like it said next, something like that. It said next bass fishing superstar. Right. I was like, yeah, oh. and and I remember my brother sending me a picture of that and texting me and saying. Geez, put a little pressure on this kid. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm like, I'm like, man, I won one tournament. I won a BFL. And I won. I tied for a BFL. I won one tournament. I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh goodness gracious. So I'm like, <laughs> they, I'm like, I don't know about this one. That's what they. <laughs> did. But you, you rose to the challenge, man. Ex- exactly. You you persevered. Th- thank you very much. And it's like you know you became the successful child star you weren't the cory feldman who, who <laughs> crashed the Corey or either. the cory whatever yeah, that either crashed and burned you know you were one of like who's an example of a successful one uh not danny bonaducci from the partridge family either I not macaulay Culkin. not macaulay yeah shit man you're the I only example of a successful one. Yeah, one. The only one damn good job guy round of applause <laughs> for jacob wheeler successful childhood star <laughs> nailing it but I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, Ronnie Howard, maybe Ronnie Howard. Ron, Ron they, Howard. There it is. Yes. There we go. Ronnie Howard. Well, Richie C. The next Ronnie Howard. <laughs> I'll meet you over at Arnold's after this, Jacob. <laughs> uh, no, man. But but seriously, it's been amazing. And and what Ryan talked about, I remember that article also. And I'm like, okay, so that 2011 period, and then of course 2012 with your your uh, your cup victory. Yeah, that's like now you're mainstream. OK, now you are mainstream. And doesn't it even seem weird when I say mainstream in conjunction with professional bass fishing? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Look where this has come, Jacob. Yeah. I, I, look what has happened here. You know, I, let's look how ridiculous this is in, in, <laughs> in perspective here. <laughs> you make a money. You make money professional bass fishing and I make money doing a bass fishing talk show. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. God bless America. You love and, uh, hey, you can't, we were talking about that. We love that. You yeah, gotta love that. I mean, seriously. Only in America. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. But the, here's the thing. This, as we talked about before, is the magic of bass fishing. It really is. That's mm-hmm. that's the magic. Um, there's nothing that evokes. Uh, okay, and again, I'm giving you biased opinions, but. Um, because I'm a bass head, but there's nothing that evokes emotion and passion and drive like bass fishing does to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, my wife, she told me, she said, she said, she's like, you're really lucky. And I said, well, why is that? And she is like, you know, you get to experience something that is so cool. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, she's like, you guys get to feel the worst of the worst of feeling the worst you feel when you get to down to a hundredth place finish and you lose the fish or whatever, but you also get to experience the highest of highs when you win, sure. when the week goes right, when everything happens. And that was like, yeah, you're right. Like we get, we get it both. Like you're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. But at the same point in time, we get to experience the highest of highs. You know, and that that's like, you know, when you win and everything goes right, it's 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 something special. You also get the I was that close feeling, too, which Dude, you experienced tell, two tournaments ago. Tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I mean, see. well, you were I, in fifth. Fifth ain't bad. I know about that. I have, <laughs> I've, I've won a few tournaments, but I know I know I've got multiple second place finishes. So second place in a Bassmasters Classic, second place in a Forestwood Cup, second place yeah. in 
sure. like one of these things, you know, in, in a Bash Pro Tour event. So, like, I, I've had plenty of the close, oh, almost right there, but not nah, it happened. Yeah, we had all the emotions. Yeah, all the gamut. And we talked to Atafo about this, too, after he won the Classic he was on. And, and I tried to find a, a, a comparison or an analogy to the morning after the Bassmaster Classic. And, and, and the only analogy that I could – come up with was it was like the first time that he got laid that he had sex it was like he woke up the next day and he was like wow this just happened okay that was good <laughs> yeah you know I mean, that, was good. that was yeah he's like yay hot way to go <laughs> you know what i mean but but yeah. the, but the <laughs> other side of the coin that you just talked about Again, I'm going to relate it to women. Again, that's the heartbreak, man. Like, yeah, I'm sure you've had your heart broken in some time in your life. Some girls dumped you here or there or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, man. That's not catching fish at a tournament. That's the heartache. That It is. It's tough. I remember that. I'll tell you one of the toughest times in, you know, in the last couple of years is, like, I was at the Sabine River. And, and I the first day, competition, I'm, like, in 52nd place, 54, no, 55th or somewhere there, in the 50s, like, right there. And I knew I had the second day I had a late flight. So I was going to allow me to have time to go run. So I was going to run all the way to Houston. Now I run like 80% of the run. So on Navionics, the, I, they had like uh, like basically marker marker poles on on the app and on my mapping, like basically to run into this main river. Well, so I'm going to make this run and I'm running in there and I run like, it was like 136 mile run. Jeez. That's Rick Clunn stuff. One wet. And I'm <laughs> sitting there, and I'm running, and I'm running, and I get to this, the mouth of this river, and the, the marker poles are gone, completely gone. They have a big, big markers, like, you know, like completely gone, and I get stuck. I end up getting stuck. And long story short, for those of you who follow me and seen some of the stuff, you know, I, I end up getting out. The tides drop, and I'm pushing. I'm pulling. Can't get out. My marshal, like, dude, you're gonna have to get out of the boat. Tides, tides drop, and we have to get out of here. <laughs> he so better. Push, we get. He helps me push off the sandbar. We push off. You know, and at that point in time, I knew that was against the rules, so I called up tournament officials, and they end up telling me, "Hey, look, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna disqualify your catch for today." Oh. Imagine having to run 130 miles back, <laughs> knowing that you just got disqualified from no. the event. That was. It was like, all I could do not to run my boat into the Gulf of Mexico, spear wave, and call it good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, but that's just one. And that was just one of those, those deals. And I remember driving home to make matters. I, would dri- I was driving home thinking about this the whole way home back to home, Tennessee. And, and I live in Chattanooga. But um, I, I, and I, I run out of gas in the truck. I pull <laughs> up on this gas. So we're just like a dang. I'm like. I can't even win. <laughs> How'd you do that? So I, I, I pull off a gas. All right. So I look at my phone. I'm like, all right, there's like 10 miles away from a gas station. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I pull off. It was one of those gas stations that was like seven miles off the exit. Okay. So I drive all the way <laughs> seven miles off this exit and I'm already on E. Done. So I drive all the way off. I get there and it's closed. Of course. So I drive all the way back, get on the highway, get back on. I'm within a mile of a gas station. I see the, the I guess the pilot deal, and I, and I oh, truck runs out of gas. Oh goodness! And I sat there and I'm like, and I waved down a guy in Alabama. He was a, a farmer, and he came over and picked me up and took me to the gas station and drove me back. I was like, dude, I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, that's but that's part of it. So, like, there's the, you know, you hear about all the great times and all the times that it's unbelievable. There's times you lose this fish by the side of the boat, lose 100,000, you know, lose a tournament by by one single fish or you end up, you know, yeah. you know, running on top of the sandbar, lose, you know, running out of gas. I mean, this stuff happens like that. So, we say it all the time. There's always a helping hand, though. Yeah. You know, like Tom Monsoor gets to come drag you off the sandbar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That, that, that was another one, too. <laughs> <laughs> We were there I for that one. I tend to run and try to run through these sandbars and things. I've, I've had a couple. I've had two times I've run on top of a sandbar on the Mississippi River. That Mississippi River, you got to watch out for that place. Yeah. <laughs> it changes a little. That's, what, uh, that's why John Cox runs the aluminum boat. That's his That's own. why. I see, I need to learn from John's. John's figured it out. He just runs the aluminum boat. He gets to run in like four inches of water. Yeah. Never have to worry about anything. He gives zero Fs. He's fishing where squirrels live. 
That's that's what, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what he does, man. Hey, let's let's move on to this Table Rock victory, okay? Let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, again, no stranger to victory. I mean, you've won on the FLW tour. You've you've won twice on on, on BASS on the elites. Um, ultimate match. That's no easy task either, honestly. And and now, of course, you've won major league fishing events, and now this Bass Pro Tour deal, dude. I mean, that that's a pretty special event. I, I'm sure you had a little personal vendetta against yourself because of your fifth place finish at the at the previous phase. Yeah, I mean, you mean there's you're... no doubt that I I was like, I sat there. That morning, excuse me, thinking about that, that I really was thinking about the event in North Carolina where I was leading. I catch like an eight and a half pounder on a frog, and I'm leading going into the third period. I'm up on Jacob Perosnik. We were over there at Sharon Harris, and I remember like I was sitting there where there was like 30 spectator boats around me, which is, Sharon Harris is a pretty small little lake. And I sat there and I, and I tried to play safe because I was up by like 10 pounds. Now, Sharon Harris. Obviously, me catching an eight-pounder on a frog, I was catching four and five-pounders on a frog all day, especially in that second period and that third period. It, it wasn't a whole lot of weight. Like, you know, you could make it up in just one cast, two casts, no problem. And so, like, for me, like, I stayed in that area. I hunkered down, and I caught a few fish, but I ended up getting edged out by 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 Prosnick, and he won the event. So I'm sitting there, and I get second. You know, I end up second in the tournament. Had a good event, had a good, really good week, but that was one that I'm like, mm, I will never stop competing at as, as hard as I can because what happens in that format, what happens is once you get to that first place level, what ends up happening is like in any other tournament, you don't know. So you just compete as hard as you can, and sometimes you don't know if you're you know close to winning or not at all. Yeah, there's no clue. Well, you just never know. Yeah. Only time, you know, but – when you know you're ahead, sometimes you get to that maintaining level where you try to maintain. Like, all sure. right, I'm going to sit on this school of fish even though I know I could probably run somewhere different. But I'm going to chance that if I go somewhere else and I might not catch anything. But I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to try to milk it for all it's worth. And what ends up happening is you're the only one sitting here maintaining where the nine other guys are hunting. They're mm-hmm. hunting as hard as they possibly can. Right. And then once they connect and they figure it out. Bing, 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 bing. Then you and hear it. Here, there, there's the uh, um ding. It happens like that. So so I had learned a valuable lesson in that event that I will never, ever go back to that maintaining level. I'm going to hunt from the start to the end. And catch no as many as you can. I, I was like, I'm done with it. And at Table Rock, you know, uh, it got to the point where right around the end, middle of the third period, Brandon Paul and it got pretty close to where he was within about six pounds, which, you know, a table rock again, not very hard to make it up when you pull up on a place and you catch them every drop. So I just kept after it. And at the point in time where I got 12 pounds up, I was like, don't tell me anymore. I'm fishing until I, I last cast. And, and when they said lines out, I'm like, what do we got? And, and, you know, you know, we won the round. So now I sit there and I'm like, dude, <laughs> Fine. I'm like, you know, like it was, it was a lot of emotion because second place at the classic second place over there in, in, in North Carolina, you know, a lot of close calls, those fifth place finishes, you go away from me like, well, whatever, you know, Aaron deserved it. Andy was up in the morning. What, you know, good event, but what, you know, it, you know, had a good week. Those events where you're leading on a championship day, and you know that score tracker, and you know you're in the lead, and you end up losing, those are the ones that hurt you the most. Gotcha. And, and, and that was the one. Yeah, it's a crusher. Oh, and but that was the one. If I don't seriously don't know if I would have won Table Rock if I wouldn't have experienced how that felt in North Carolina. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I was like, man, like, but regardless, it was it was a phenomenal week. You know what that is, Jake? That's what Rick Clun calls the evolution of an angler. Yeah. You you've yeah. discovered a, a stepping block in your own personal angling, and that is your 
that's your evolution as an angler for real, and it got you a Absolutely. victory, dude. Plus, it's a it's a relatively new game too, and and you guys are learning it, and uh, that that's it a is. big piece of the puzzle, I think. And what you it were is. describing is almost like the prevent defense in football. Absolutely. You know? Yep. Where you don't you you kind of let the team get a little too close by doing that, and and you can Absolutely. lose it. You see it all the time. You see it happen in every sport. It happens yep. that way because, like you said, you're sitting there prevent defense, and they. 10 yards at a time, 10 yards at a time, 10 yards at a time. All of a sudden, you're up by 14. Well, now you're down by – you're up by seven, and all of a sudden, they go down, they kick an onside kick, and all of a sudden, now they score again, and you're tied, and you're going to overtime. <laughs> yeah, and then your kicker hits one off the uprights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that happens. I've yeah. heard. So there, there's no <laughs> – there's no such thing as um, fish management anymore for Jacob Wheeler. It's catch them all. You know, I think you have to be smart. You know, I, I the for each each round. And that's what I like about it is like each round is different. So like I'm not going to blast everything I have necessarily to win that eliminate or the elimination round. So the first two days you have a shotgun elimination round. It's sort of like one round in my opinion. And so you make top twenty, you move on. So I'm not going to go and worry too much about trying to win that round. You know, and so like, but obviously, and that's what's cool about it is you, when you're at the same body of water, you have to, you have to mentally, you know, all right, what am I going to save? What am I going to burn? But dude, you caught 88 fit. That's 88 um dings. Okay. <laughs> um, it, uh, <laughs> no, there's an um ding. G- give us an um ding. Um ding. There's another um ding. Um ding. But seriously, how you so I'm not buying it. There's no okay. (laughs) You caught 88 fish for 129 pounds. You weren't that was the layup. Yeah, that that, that was that was that was me like strategically still strategically still at that point. Tom, I knew those places were going to get pressured. Okay, that makes sense. So like I knew that that stuff was going to get pressured, and I had like three places that. I knew weren't going to get pressured, so I didn't even hit them that day. Were those your uh-huh. so-called sneaky spots? One place was super sneaky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One place was like I, I almost didn't graph the place, and I, I sat there on Navionics, like you know, and, and, and this is another thing. So I found a couple of the sneaky places the second day of competition <laughs> because I had such a lead. Sneak holes. You got to have sneak holes. Sneaky hole. Yeah. Anyway, nice. so I found a couple of those sneaky holes on this day two of competition, which is elimination round for everybody else. Everybody else is going all out trying to make the top 20 cut. There was only a handful of guys in the top five, maybe top 10 that could ease off and try to practice some point in time throughout the day. I was able to, to practice, you know, two periods, four periods. And at that point in time, you know, I found a couple places. And, and when I relate, like when I say sneak hole, in my mind, a sneak hole is a place that is irrelevant on a map. Irrelevant. Gotcha. Like not a big long point, not a big hump, nothing like that on a map. It, it was something that doesn't even look like anything. Like the sneak hole that I had found, I, I found it was all it was a turn in the bank. And it was just a place that like I almost did not even grab. I, st- I, st- I stared at my phone that night for literally – I, I don't know. The night before I, that that turn the day, the day two, I stared there for probably three hours where I was marking places that I was in a graph. Okay. And I'm sitting there, and I didn't even I didn't even mark that place because it was so it didn't look like anything, and I didn't even see it. On, and then when I rolled by it, I looked at it, and I was like, man, it could be there. And I all over, and it was like, dink, 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 dink. It was it was so crazy. So like I, I knew like at that I mean it, it was it was dinged up. It was dinged up. <laughs> it was dinged up. Dinged. So like, I'm gonna see here if I can find. Hold, on, I don't even know. I'm gonna see here. Hold up. I'm gonna see. I'm, I'm popping on my phone real quick just because y'all y'all got me all excited about that. Yeah, we like that. That's the magic of a bass fishing talk show. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, so, that's what so you're... that was the picture of the dinged up spot. There's dings everywhere. That was that was them right there, okay, and, and so I, I was so I was so excited. I took a picture. I not, I never made a cast on, but I knew they were bass. Yeah, you know, in that point in time. So that was that's a sneak hole. <laughs> that sure is. And there you go. <laughs> it was it was dinged up. It's a loaded sneak hole. <laughs> it was a pretty good place. So then I actually qualified. 
for the championship round off that place. I ended up having, you know, what you doing, bro? hold up, buddy. Who's so yelling got, at hold you? Up. Wait a second. I got somebody in here right now. Adrian, I'm on a dang straight cast. I got Adrian Arena stopped in. Where are you at, buddy? Where's it? <laughs> Wait a second. Hold up. Where's, it? Where's he at? Hold up. I'm going to show what's up. Say yo. Hey, Say nice yo, legs. Yo, ho, ho. Oh, Where's what up, at? dude? Hey, what's uh, going on? Hey, we got everybody in here. Adrian Avita ate all my tater tots once at a Bassmaster oh, Classic. Cool. That's a true story. He ate all my damn tater tots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the truth. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> I got to figure out where I'm going to park, bro. All right, so... So that, that Wait, was no, the- Jacob, we're done with you. Bring Adrian on. That's it. Adrian, you gonna get in here? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so he stopped in before we head to Wisconsin. Nice. He, uh, he stopped in to, to, to stay, stay, stay the night at the house. So he, he just got home. He didn't know we were, hey, we were, we were on live. It's all right. It's good. That's, yeah, he, that, wanted, he wanted to chime in and tell you guys what he thought about it. No, and that's, uh, and, and that's the, again, the magic of a bass fishing talk show. You never know who's going to show up. Never know who's going to roll yeah. up. Like exactly one time right. Todd Faircloth punched uh, Jeff Crete on this show because <laughs> Jeff Crete used all the soap or something at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yep. Bobby Lane's wife um, walked in front of the camera, and, and to some people she stood there too long, but to me she didn't stand there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> that means anything. It's a compliment. <laughs> but anyway, that's the magic of a Bass Fishing Talk Show. And now back to you, Jake Wheeler. Yeah, so obviously it was it was um, it was about finding the places that were a little bit uh, less uh, relevant on a map, and that's always how it is. Whenever you're going to fish offshore events, our maps and our electronics have gotten so good as of recent that it's hard to win on said community holes. Sure, you know places, and in, in, in Indiana it's tough because. You find the sneaky place that they're on. <laughs> There's no such damn thing in Indiana. <laughs> you can find it, but it's only going to last. <laughs> yeah, for a day. About one or two tournaments, and then all yep. of a sudden it's going to become a community. Ball. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. That's how it works. Yes. Like, I remember that on Guy's Trozer where I fished there my whole life. And, you know, I found I found places there where I, you know, but everywhere else in the country, you know, you have a lot of water. And if you can find a place that's, that's a little bit out of the way or a little bit unique, that normally helps you win a multi-day event for sure. Yeah, I mean, and, and you got to have that. That's the competitive edge, man. Absolutely. And yeah. here's the here's something that people may not have picked up on, but you said I was on my phone for hours that night mm-hmm. just looking at places I was going to graph. Prepping. 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 It's all about preparation. People don't realize how much time we spend. I spend on, you know, Navionics app, all my Laurent C maps, on Google Earth. I mean, you, you, if I have, you got to get my wife in here, literally, if we're getting everybody up, like well, she would tell you, I spend hours, I spend at least two hours a night on Google Earth, probably an hour and a half a night on Google Earth, just prepping for the next event. Looking. How, how long have you been doing that in your career? Like from day one? No, no. Probably the last four or five, three, four years. Okay. I, I spent a little bit more time. There's something about knowing the playing field, and when if I don't have time to go and pre-practice for a place with a little new baby, new baby girl, and and being you know recently married last couple of years, it, it, it's made it to where it's a little bit where you have to balance life a little bit more. And so I have spent more of my time on Google Earth, looking and prepping and preparing, and knowing, hey, look, there's grass in this area, there's not grass here, there's this, there's that, there's docks. And it's where I feel like I pull up to a lake where I feel like I know it a little bit. And it's not as good, obviously, as running around on it. But it, there's something about that. Sure. And, and having that, you know, knowing, hey, look, you know, this is here and that's there. And just knowing there's a couple of boat well, ramps dude, around. Remember Gary Klein and Roland Martin? Those guys used to rent planes, bro. Yes. Before yes. Google Earth. Same yeah, reason. I, 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 uh, the only other time I've ever done that, I've actually had a helicopter. I flew over Lake Okeechobee okay. one time. And I ended up making a top 20 in an event. Because I found one single hole in a reed, like a big, a big spawning area that I fished several times, which I knew Okeechobee fairly well at that point in time. But there was one place that I could literally see the beds, like they were real bright and the water gets real clear in the backwaters. And I run in there and practice. I break through this reed clump and I get through there and there hadn't been a bass boat in there. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, top, you know, top 20 cut. I didn't make Whatever. the top 10. I lost a couple of the nice ones in there, but that. 
<laughs> out of the way that that I mean that was before, I mean in Google Earth didn't have an early enough or you know a most recent enough picture that it showed that so like that that kind of stuff's been happening for a long time. Right. That's it. I mean. Uh, those are dream spots too. <laughs> do you do you do you set any kind? I know you do all the preparation at home with the Google Earth and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get on the water on a practice day, do you set a schedule for yourself where maybe you you check an area for twenty minutes, half hour, and then move, or or is it just kind of I'm going to check out a couple areas and and just fly with it? So I, I never set a schedule per se, like like before the morning starts. Okay, there's a point in time like where I, I want to spend a certain amount of time in an area, and if I don't figure it out in that area quick enough, then I, I need to move on. You know, because because a lot of times, you know, especially in that format, in the major league fishing format, when you're looking around, it's so important to see a lot of the lake, especially mm-hmm. if you haven't been there before. So covering a lot of water, seeing what the lake has to offer, saying okay, there's grass in this area, there's flooded bushes in this area. There's clear water here. There's dirtier water there. It allows you to really be able to dissect the lake a lot quicker and allows you to have more options throughout the week when you know those places are there. So if I feel like I've been in an area too long and I've been there too long looking, you know, around, I'll I'll sort of like, okay, like, you know, like at Table Rock, I was, I spent a day up the White River and a way, a day up the the James. And so the first day I, I was like sitting there and I'm like, man, it's like 11:30, and I was in this one creek arm way up the white, and it was up, it was up way up there. And I said, mm, I'm not feeling. If I don't get, if I don't find one place in the next 30 minutes, I'm writing this off. So I gave it a 30 minute time limit. Don't find anything. I cut out. And I run through 20 miles the other way. There are certain times you have to do that because it's time management and practice as well. And and that's definitely right. something that you have to sort of man, you know manage. Uh, you know, as you, each, each event's a little different and each lake's completely different, but that was something for me. Like I had to, you definitely have to put a couple of time limits, you know, and that normally happens that given day though. I don't normally try to do that unless I don't want to limit myself and have my, my practice all, all planned here's, out. Here's right. what sucks. Right. That I'm going to be, you know, set up, but definitely it's a good idea and it's helped me several times. You, this you know, is why you that. do it. This is why you set time limits because every time that you're going to say, I got to get out of here. This sucks. You're going to catch one. Yeah. And, and you yeah, add but, 20 minutes. And, and yeah. then, yeah. And then you add 20 more minutes and yeah. then you're like, man, th- and, and then you're just like, oh man, this is we ain't catching shit. And then and boom, you get another one. That's the reason I, the reason I asked is because I'm awful Every at time. this. I'm so terrible at this. Yeah. I, I, last weekend I said, uh, I'm going to be at each spot for a half hour and I'm going to hit as much of the lake because I only had a day. And then three hours later, I'm in the same bay trying to catch all these cruisers. You know, oh, it's just stupid. It's, wor- it's worse when you see them, though. Right. Yeah. Right. They taunt when you usually you. can see them. It's like a, it's, it's, it's a tough deal. Well, then it turned into I got to know it's like if I can catch them and how I can catch them. And now yeah, the it's, day's like, gone. it's like a bed fish. Like, I, right. I I don't know how many times in a bass tournament, in a, you know, an event where I'm like on a like six or seven pounder and they nip at your little cricket your t- <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're just like, I don't give a dang. I don't care. If I don't catch a bass all day, but I'm gonna catch you. Like it gets personal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then you're about to leave, and then he turns leave. in a way, and you're like, oh, oh, he might, yeah, he might bite. Taunts and an hour later, and they look at it, and you're like, whatever, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> See you, bud. <laughs> it takes hey, a lot to suck you. <laughs> but man, I, I, you know, sneaky holes, fish management. Bottom line, it's another victory on the uh, on the old notch of Jacob Wheeler's belt, dude. Man, that's awesome. It's, it's, um, I'll tell you what, it's been a couple of years, so it's, it, it's a good feel. I haven't won since 2017, so it's a good feeling to, you know, to get it done, man. It's, for it, for it, sure. It, you never can take that win for granted. You know, you make the top tens, you can never take a high finish for granted, but when you win, it's like you, everything has to go together. Yeah, it buddy. has to come together. And like last week was just one of those weeks that, um, you know, I'll remember a lot of that. You know, I'll remember the whole week, you know, it was just, it just worked out. And I'll remember a lot of that for, I mean, that's going to be a really important memory for me for a long time. That's awesome. You, uh, do you consider yourself a simple angler? I would say I'm not a, I would say I'm simple, but I would say I, I, I don't, I don't really complicate it too, too bad, but I would say overall I'm simple. I would say I, I try to, I do a lot. I would say, this is what I'm saying. I'm not a specialist. I'm a generalist. Okay. So and, like, and I like that. As I'm not like one particular bait that I'm always locking my hand. Now I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'm a big topwater fisherman, 
if you ever watch me at all, I'm throwing top order like a lot. But yeah. <laughs> but I don't necessarily I don't feel like I'm a specialist like I'm always going to have that bait, you know, a big half ounce jig and I'm going to sit there and make them bite it. Like Right, like De- like Denny Brower, like Denny that. Brower you think jigs, right? Um yep. Kevin Van Dam you you, you let's you, well you could go spinner bait, crank bait, whatever. Um and then you say crank bait. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. Iconelli um you know, power. But see, power. Iconelli, he's a generalist. He he is. He's a generalist. Either Edwin Evers, a generalist. But you are simple fishermen. Okay. Yes, correct. You're 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 generalist, but you take the baits that you know are percentage baits, and you're presenting them in percentage areas, Absolutely multiple right. times. That's simple so, fishing. We don't have 25 different colors we throw most of the time. <laughs> right. It's right. normally like three or four colors, but it's 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 versatile. Trying to be as versatile as you possibly can. Trying to have no kinks in your armor, which is hard to do. Like I, I sit here and I hate throwing a Carolina rig half the time, but I've made, you know, I've, I've had some good finishes on a Carolina rig and I've learned how to understand the techniques that I feel like I really stink at. Right. You like know, you won a that. tournament on that dumb moon eye thing, you know, that yeah. what the heck, that bait. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's no yeah. Indiana bait. Ice fishing. Yeah. yeah. To me, it, it was exactly what it was. It was ice fishing. I've seen it day in and day out. It was right. Demiki fishing and sit there and those fish would come up and they're big schools. But that was something, it's it, it just, all of those techniques, and that's what's so cool about this sport, is we continue to have new baits come out, new electronics come out, new technology, and you always are having to work at trying to find the next new thing. You know, the chatter bait was unbelievable. Umbrella rigs were crazy back in the day. But fish, I don't care what you throw, they get used to seeing the same stuff. And we're always trying, I spend hours looking for that next new thing what is it going to be what is it going to give you a little bit of an edge but you have to know how to use all the rest of it you have to, you can't you can't reinvent a jig <laughs> right you can't reinvent a shaky head you can't reinvent a big 10 inch worm you can't reinvent a crankbait you can't it just there's certain things you have to learn how to throw and you have to be you know at least to where you feel like when you know the cert when it's, it's set everything sets up and the condition set up right you know you that you are confident that you can catch them on it and and you feel like as time goes on, as you grow as an angler, your tackle selection gets larger and larger, just because so there's more confidence. <laughs> so there. I mean, now that Demiki thing, if you run into I, that situation, I, I, I you got Demiki it. box it's in your back school, pocket. I had to give the local high school uh, anglers. I gave them like, I gave them like so much stuff right here in Chattanooga. I just told them I said, here, take it. I said, I can't. Because, like, there's a certain point in time you keep buying stuff, dude, and you're just sitting there and you're like, how am I going to, you know, it's just like, there's no way. I'm never going to throw all this stuff. And once you get used to having it, now it's all got to be in the boat because you're used to having it. I'm a hoarder. I'm a hoarder. I'm really bad at that, too. Like, I got to have everything. Like, it just sits there and I'm like, dude, it's just, it's a tough deal, man. I'm sitting there and I'm like... Do I get rid of this? But man, I might use it one day. I've never right. even opened that crank bait package ever in my life, but yet I'm going to still keep it. And I haven't done it for 10 years, but yet I'm going to keep it. But it's there. It. It's there. And you know it's there. That's what matters. <laughs> that one color that's the purple and the pink and the little red. Oh, there's one day the bass are going to eat that. Yep. Exactly. And I'm glad you brought up crank baits because you kind of described yourself as a as a topwater fisherman. I know you love fishing topwaters, but I think you. I see you using that crankbait so often how it's meant to be used as a search tool. And 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 so many more times than not, that search tool ends up cashing you checks or winning tournaments. Um, in particular, that DT6, dude. I mean, you love that thing. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. There's certain baits that you can't – you got to have in your tackle box. You know, a wiggle wart's one of them. Uh, you know, a, a DT6, a shad wrap. There are certain crankbaits out there that you cannot leave home without. Like, they just have to be there. And, you know, in the pre-spawn, summertime, when the fish are shallower, fishing grass edges, whatever it is, balsa wood has done, has been around for a long time. Yeah, balsa plugs, that's what originated all this craze. Sure, like the, absolutely. They're buoyant, they have that certain a bass fish catching fish catching action 
And that DT6 is just a special bait that obviously won the classic a few years back at Gunnersville. Has caught so many big fish for me. So many big fish. I, I remember going out here in Chickamauga right before the classic, and I, I went out for like two hours and I caught like 25 pounds, caught like a seven pounder, and they just do they eat that sucker. So, but you have to have, there's a couple of baits that you can't. You just can't leave home without. You got to have your wiggle warts. You got to have your shatter apps. You got to have DD sixes. You got to have, you know, your single swim baits. You got to have those things, and 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 you can't reinvent that wheel. It that just, just that wiggle wart. That wiggle wart. I know you're a huge fan of that bait. I I know I know you are, and I know you got a stack of them. <laughs> but the, I mean, but the question. I mean, and I don't know the answer to this. Why does why does Storm or Rapala? What the? Why do they not recreate that bait, Jacob? Why don't they recreate the magic. So they have they have the same bait with the wiggle wart. They have the same bait. They make it. The people get caught caught up with like a pre. You know, you hear about this pre pre wiggle wart, like storm old wiggle warts. So yeah, pre rappelus. Yes, pre rappelus wiggle wart. So you know, there's there's wiggle warts you can buy at the store any day of the week. You know, from from your academy or whatever your local tackle shop for for you know decent like five ninety nine. Everybody gets caught up with the old ones just because it's a little bit this, a little bit different plastic, different because they caught them so good back in the day. Right. So you got to imagine this. So, like, when we started throwing chatterbaits, let's put it this way. Start throwing chatterbaits. A lot of times, like, you know, that first chatterbait was so great because it was the first time they seen it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yes. the first time they seen it. It's magic. They bit it, like, unbelievable. Imagine the first time a bass seen an A-Rig. Obviously, you look at Dang Paul Ice down there, Dang Guntersville, catches 100 some pounds. <laughs> it's wizardry. Like, what the heck? It was Elias like, wizardry. Yes. Now you throw an A rig like that, if it doesn't have eight blades and it doesn't have more, this color and this dummy and this and that, you won't get a bite. And half the time, you can't even get a bite on it. So I think what it is is like people get caught up with, you know, when it first comes out because it is such a big deal, talking about basketing a customer to things. That they get so caught up with old, oh man, remember when that wiggle ward kept crushing all oh, the old ones are better. Trust me, I have plenty of old ones and I have plenty of new ones. I've caught just as many on the old ones and just as the new ones and vice versa. But come so, on, I, you're reaching for the old both. ones. You're reaching for the old ones, aren't you? Come on. No, I, I seriously, there's not. I, I have the old ones. I have, I literally probably have $5,000 worth of old wiggle warts sure I, I do i have probably at least that many but like i i make a box in the beginning i made a box of just my wiggle warts and half of them are old ones half of them are new ones and just because of the colors it's just a color thing like okay i want this one and i and i have teeth marks on old ones i got teeth marks on new ones that are just chewed up all to get uh, it just certain baits will run right and certain baits will be like you know you, you just get you get like where this one color is right and i i do get to where i get caught up with color but Overall, I, I feel like sometimes you have a bait that just catches them. And I've, I have DT6s that I, I, I throw. The, I have my box that are just tore all the heck. And I will <laughs> tell you right now, they don't run the same as every DT6. They right. don't. They're special ones, yes. There are special ones in a bunch. You might run through six of them. And there will be one, for whatever reason, that bait runs just perfect. And those fish love it and you can't you can't like just go ahead and buy another one at the store right and expect for the exact exact same results so for me i do believe in that when you have a bait that runs right works right action is right they're just it's just set up perfect and that's and that's enough i keep doing rick clun references tonight but that's his like he's got his a cranks and his b cranks and yep, those those absolutely a, those a cranks are marked with an a sharpie and those are the special ones the B ones are the ones he brings out in reserve or maybe practice, something like that. But See, uh, I, I can't go through all the crane baits I have. That's it's like, yeah, he still amazes me, like, sitting there, like, I mean, just, just the, the attention to detail that some of these guys, especially Rick Clun, like you talked about, and, 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 even, and even David Fritz, a lot of the old-time crankers, like, how much attention to detail they had on each plug in this and line size and just constantly trying to learn. And I just, you just got so much respect for those old hands that it just it <laughs> caught so many bass. Un unbelievable. Dude. Unbelievable. unbelievable. That's all I can say. Do you have a, do you have a, a, a bait that's a, a special bait to you that you might, you know, that, that, that you hold dear to your heart that you bring out when you, when, when you need something in a clutch, you know, like an, like an old fashioned, 
an old Charlie Chaplin? I do. I do have um, an old Rapala number five shad wrap. Okay. That um, is an old crawdad, but what it, it's so old that the paint had chipped off, and I caught them on it. And the paint had chipped off a little bit, and, and the fish have eaten so good, but it sinks. Aha. It sinks because water had gotten in the water balsa, log. and it still has that great action. And I can get that bait about eight or nine feet deep, which a normal number five shadow runs about six. So that sound gun, I. You know, normally when you're throwing a shad wrap, it's a little bit pre-spawn or colder water. It, it, if it was 44 degree water temperature, or 48 degree water temperature, it'd be hard for me. And I got that bait hung up, and I couldn't get it from out from underneath the rock. It'd be hard for me not to jump down in the water and get that son again. <laughs> That's <laughs> his best one. Fun to just jump in there and call it good. I have some old Bagleys that are like that, man. That it's just oh, oh Jesus, I tell you. It's a lot of times it's the old balsa plugs that are just like oh, eesh. couldn't do it. Exactly. Hey, um, I want to talk to you. This is obviously a new era of bass fishing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there, you know, no breaking news. There's three bass fishing leagues and, and Hey, you're in one of the new ones. You're in the new one right now. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a, it's a different era of bass fishing and it's all to stimulate growth. Correct. Absolutely. I right. mean, that's what we want to grow the sport. We, we love it. We want everybody to love it. Like, like we do. Um, but in this changing times, there's there's positives and negatives, right? Just like oh, absolutely, it, just yeah, like like always it, is. What I'd like to know from you, Jacob, is can you give us a positive and a negative of these changing times in bass fishing from both a professional's point of view as well as a bass fishing fan's point of view? Well, I think that. Um... You know, I, I think that the biggest thing in the transition of, of everything that's gone on, um, I think it gives everybody – the positive is it, there's more fishing. There's more fishing to be watched. Sure. I mean, and, and me being a fan, I'm going to watch hey, my buddies Brian Thrift and Scott Martin on the FLW Tour. I'm going to watch my buddies Matt Air, Matt Airy over there at the Bass Elite side. And, I, and, and if I'm not catching them and I miss the cut, I'm going to watch my guys catch them on the Bass Pro Tour. I'm a fan of the sport and I'm going to support bass fishing because ultimately that's the biggest thing. And we all want to support the sport and, and make it and grow it. And, 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 and obviously you've seen it with high school and college bass fishing. Um, I think the biggest, you know, one of the biggest negatives is you see a, a lot of anglers um, taking sides, this and that. Like for me, I just, I feel like it, it's sort of like, you know, like if you love bass fishing and, and, and if, you know, if you like major league fishing and you like the way you like to watch it, that's fine. But there's no reason a dog bass or FLW, and there's no reason if you like bass and FLW, you like the five fish filament. You know, there's no reason a dog, you know, major league fishing. Like, you know, we're all trying to go out here and make a living doing something we love to do. And we're very fortunate, very blessed to be able to do that. But I think that there is some, some division in, in a little bit of that. And you see that. Um, you know, just, just, you know, with, with some of the guys, um, in some, in some, just, you know, just some, some of the fans, I, um, I noticed it. Totally fun. Yeah. That's the, the division part is, yeah, is the day. negative for me also. That's for yeah, sure. That, that's what hurts me the most. I see that, which you always had that though. Now you also, I'm going to be straight with you. You also had that with FLW and Bass. Yep. You always had that. Sure. Now, going back into when Erwin Jacobs put million dollars into the cup, there was always who's the best, what's better, who has the best anglers. I mean, you got to think about it. You know, like that, that's how it's always been. So there's all competition is healthy. It truly is. Competition is healthy. And I think that this is, you know, a, a great time in the sport because there's so much opportunity for all of these young anglers that are coming up. There's so many more people getting involved with bass fishing uh, at a young age to where, you know, they have an opportunity to get get here. And, and you look at the guys like I look at, you know, Patrick Walters, a young kid that's yeah. fishing Elite Series. He's doing a great job. Young kid. Amazing. Pro staff guy. Garrett fishing, Piquette. A lot of great, great guys. Year. Great year. So I look at people that, that are coming up through the high school, college ranks, um, you know, that have done like myself and Jordan Lee's and Brandon Polonix and everybody else. And, and I just, you know, I take my tip my hat to him, like, good job. Regardless of where you're at, I think that there's just too much division. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that irritates me. 
that's the biggest thing that irritates me. We're all here wanting to promote our promote, you know, what's going on in the bass fishing, but we gotta like we gotta be careful because we're all I mean, we're all tight knit. We're all hey, we're all bass fishing brothers. Let's yeah. let's, let's keep it at that. And remember the common bond. That's the Absolutely. common that's the common bond. But can can we can we have can we what's the what's the the key to unity? Can we have three leagues? Can we do this? I don't know what's good, what the future is going to hold. I, I I don't. We don't. You know, obviously, if I had any magic crystal ball right here to look at it and sit there and be like, man, you know, um, I I don't know. You know, truthfully, I don't know if the industry because what it's happening is you have multiple companies that they're they're splitting a lot of money up. You know, obviously, let's be real. There's only so much in a budget for uh, a academy, a Rapala, whoever sponsored each league, a Toyota, right. And they can only support so much. Uh, so there's going to be a point where somebody's going to be here, someone's going to be here. It's just how it is. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. I think there is room. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it just at what what level that 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 company's going to be able to function at. And I think that just you have to be real about that, you know. And um, I mean, obviously, fans are such a huge part of that. Um, and them watching what goes on day in and day out, but that's that's gonna be. I, I don't know what's gonna happen, and that I'm excited. You know, I know I'm excited about what's happening um, right now in, in, in Major League Fishing and what's happening there um, with you know us anglers being able to get together every single meeting and sit there and talk about you know tournament rules and you know if we need to have um, you know what do we need to do better? What are we not doing? You know what are we doing good? What are we not doing great? Um, and I think that that was something that I think that is so important um, it, it, as an organization to be able to communicate and talk about. Because look, every organization and every company out there, you're, you're going to have negatives and you're going to have positives. And so if you can, if you're doing something that's not you know the best, you can always improve. And I feel like you look at the best anglers in the world, you always can improve on something that you're doing. And so I think that I love to see that because competition you know you're trying to make yourself better day in and day out and i think that's what every organization is trying to do right now and um i mean i think i think it's a good time in professional bass fishing to be a professional bass fisherman there's a lot of opportunity and i, I think there's gonna be a lot more opportunity for here to come absolutely and that is a definitely a positive and that's that's the key to unity that we all need to realize that there's more opportunities for all of us um, uh, you know, in- truly, truly is it truly is. There's more opportunity. There's more, there's more stuff going on. And, and in bass fishing, it's, it's, it's never been bigger. I feel like, you know, there's more people out there fishing. I mean, heck I live right here close to Chickamauga. Um, and, and I go out there and on a Tuesday night, yeah, I'm sitting out there and I'm cap- There's, there's a point where, or Tuesday afternoon, I'm sitting here and the parking lots are full. I mean, there's people from everywhere, you know? And, and so it's like, man, like, you know, these people work or what? You know, like sort of one of those deals. Yeah. Like. We're growing the sport, Jake. That's what's happening. That's unbelievable. So, but I also think that it's so important. You know, um, you know, with the sport growing, uh, you know, that's 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 unbelievable. So I think there's it's so such a cool thing to see uh, in 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 that's in taking care of these bodies of waters. You know, is is important as well. Sure, it is. Absolutely, it is. Hey, um, let's uh, let's goof off. Not that we haven't been already, but let's uh, let's see. we like to we like to play games on this show. You know that, absolutely. You know, and we do scenarios and all kinds of other dumb stuff. So let's um <laughs> let's do um I'm gonna pick one. How about we do um um uh, awkward uh, campground encounter scenario? Okay. All right. So, awkward yes. So here's the scenario. Basically, you're you're leading the derby. There's there's. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one day left in the um in the in the derby you're leading the derby and uh it's the night prior to the last day and and yeah, you so run, and every you, day is tomorrow yeah 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 exactly that's thank you you should be a talk show host because i suck at this but they that's, <laughs> <laughs> but so who do you run into at the campground but me pat renwick okay. pat renwick so okay Absolutely. So let's let's get some spookiness. How about? Or, yeah. Okay. So now we're. Hey, what's going on, Jake? How you been, dude? What's happening? What are you doing at the campground? 
Pat, man, I just, just, just getting, getting ready for uh, tomorrow. You know, got, 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 got championship day tomorrow. Uh, how, how, how you been, man? You know, well, good. how's everything going? You're still fishing? Uh, yeah, you know, made, made, made the cut. You know, uh, surprisingly, had, had a good day today. Well, good. Yeah, but uh, well, good. I'm glad you got time, cause um, but we just bought some meat out of the back of that guy's trunk, and we're gonna make up some steaks. So you're welcome to come over. My my wife made some uh, some jailhouse wine. Oh, you're, you're, oh you're, man! Yeah, you're you're. That sounds, yeah, man, I, that sounds that sounds amazing. But you know what? My my wife uh, have a little baby girl over here. You know she 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 she's tough to deal with sometimes. No 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 no, no! You stop. Bring your wife with because the people oh. at the next uh, camp plot they need the kids need help with their homework so she can help them. And See, and, and I'll show you pictures like, of big you know, fish that I catch. And I'll give you, you know, advice for your tournament. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, like, so the thing is, you know, Olivia, she's only four months old. So, like, you know, like, we don't want to bring around a lot of people yet. You know, got to get her, got to get her to where she's feeling. You know, like, you know, she's got to, she's got to fight off a lot of that. You know, those germs is tough. On that. We'll so find gotta, a, we'll know, find I'll, a babysitter on Craigslist. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's, it's good. So come on over. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you know. All right. Come, I'm not taking no for an answer. Have you not seen this yet? <laughs> all right. All right. Fine. Let's Sit down at my campfire, Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> Let's get serious now. Let's catch up. We haven't seen each other in a long time. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. So let's get that's philosophical. Right. Let's get philosophical. Like, you know what, Pat? Okay, I, I can't have her come over, but I, I might as well just come over and see what kind of meat you got. Thank, thank you. Glad you. Glad you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's trunk meat. He won't like it. Unreal. He won't like it. So, if there was no bass fish, what what would you fish for? If there was no bass fish. What would I fish for? Yeah. Pike. 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 Okay. It's the Pike up north. Man. That'd really? Be fun. Remember you when? Must... Uh, remember when you were a kid and you first uh, started watching bass fishing on TV or on the internet or whatever it was, Bassmaster yeah. magazine. What, what was that first tournament that sticks in your brain as a kid? Oh, crazy. Um, so there was, you know, Forcewood Cup was used to be called the Jacobs Cup. And it was on Wheeler Lake. <laughs> Dang! I swear, I'm not making this crap up. I swear, I can't make it up. There ain't no way. That's an umdang. I'm going to ask someone to win that. It's Jacob's Cup on Wheeler Lake. There, that's pretty damn cool, dude. Right there. <laughs> hey, do uh, do movies make you cry ever? Hey, I, yeah, I'll, I'll tear up. Absolutely. Like what? Like what's a movie that make you cry? You know what's crazy is I'll tell you. Um, what's that? This is sort of like. I feel bad. I mean, I feel like, dang, I'm like, a, um, what's a movie that I that made me cry? And this is going to, people are going to laugh. They're going to people laugh at this one. I'm going to be like, uh, um, recently I, I teared up at an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> okay. No, that makes perfect sense to me. Wait, the comedy special? <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 click. It was the movie Click. Okay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't okay. even a good. It wasn't even a good one. But it was but, just. I was being honest. I just. No. I don't know if it was the late nights where I was tackle prepping, or I just sat there and I just was tired. I don't know. Just a lot of emotion. Exhausted you know? from Google Earthing. I know. I probably what it was. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> hey, um, what what's a song you think you can sing well? Oh, dude. Not. I mean, not. Not. Not very. Not very. Not, not I'm not going to ask you to sing. Don't oh, think that, it's right, not right, a right, setup. Right, right. I, I won't Sweetheart ask you. I used to sing. I'm going to think here. Yeah. Um. Frank Sinatra. What? The way you look tonight is what I said. I feel like I. I. I, I used to sing that. Like, but I'm hor- I'm like horrendous. I okay. had to record myself one day, and I realized how bad I was, and I decided to stop singing. But you okay, got now like go the... ahead and sing that for us. <laughs> no way. You, you guys, you know, oh, he man. said he wouldn't ask you. I Ryan didn't asked. Either. I didn't. Yeah. Nah. I'd like, I'd like, <laughs> it's like someday when. No, I'm not even doing it. I'm not even hey, do it. No, no, fly me to rock. the moon. No, but and you got the tux on. I see it. You're sliding across the floor. Yes. That's, that's amazing. That's good. <laughs> Better. I realized I can just whistle. It doesn't sound as bad. So it's like <laughs> whistle it from time to time. <laughs> What's the best breakfast food on the planet? Um, my dad's French toast. Ooh. Best. Wow. French okay. toast solid. That sounds amazing, actually. I'm starving right now, too. That's pretty good. <laughs> hey, uh, get rid of one of these. Okay. Tournament jersey 
A wrapped truck or a wrapped boat? Wrapped boat. Wrapped boat. I hate me. I hate having a wrapped boat running around on a lake. You can you, you, you see, you're like, yeah, I seen you over on that dock, catch that seven pounder. I'm like, dang, nabbit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I'm glad you said that because I need a, um, a, a curse word interpreter. So what is the equivalent of like the real curse word for dang nabbit and then the real curse word for sorry sucker or sap sucker? You like to say both sap of those sucker. a lot. I don't know. I don't know. A real curse word for sap sucker. I don't know. What, is, what do you think, Adrian? Son of a bitch would be. Son of a son of a bitch. Sap sucker? No, na- dang nabbit. Dang nabbit with son of a son of a bee? <laughs> <laughs> and so what? what's sap sucker? What's sorry sucker? What's sorry sucker? Sorry sucker. Dumbass. 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 Yeah. Cho juggler. Same kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, with, that's I'm right. with you. I'm he, with you. He's Adrian's better at this deal than that. He's sitting over here just like, hey, he's, like he's, he's, he's trying to. Try to keep me up on this thing. <laughs> hey, tell me a joke. A jo- no. Yes. Hey, a joke. That's like or it's a random one. Yeah, tell me a joke. Drown a blonde. Ooh. What did he what, say? What's the easiest way to drown a blonde? To drown a blonde? Uh, I, I don't know. Put a scratch and sniff sticker at the bottom of a pool. <laughs> Put a scratch and sniff sticker at the bottom <laughs> what, of a pool. What does that even mean? Like, what? <laughs> 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 There's a reason you don't get it, Pat. Oh, yeah, because I'm blind. It's on your head, yeah. Oh, okay, now I get it. Oh, <laughs> Fell right into that one. Fell right Did into that one. Jokes. I'm still here, that's why I had to bring them off. Do you know Adrian Avina taught me that you can use fluorocarbon for fishing buzz baits? Really? He didn't Did really, you? but I heard him say it on Bass University. Why couldn't you? You know. Yeah, why couldn't you? You can. I, bl- I do. But I do, I, too. I, actually, I, I actually do, too. Yeah, I use fluorocarbon for buzz baits. I do. It's no reason why you can't. But yeah, a- exactly right. Adrian part- was the first guy that I heard talk about it. He was, he told old, old uh, Peter Gluzek about it on the Bass University. Gosh, he did. Hey, you, got, you got to watch out for them suckers, man. I'm Jersey, I'm true Jersey folk, man. Yeah, they be doing weird stuff, man. Don't trust those Jersey guys as far as you can throw them. I'll tell you that. That's, you gotta be careful with them. They're man. all devils. <laughs> they're all devils over there, Jake. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. It's crazy. It's a little, a little <laughs> hey, um, what's a technique in bass fishing that just shocks the hell out of you that it works so damn well? A Ned rig. The Ned rig. Isn't that dumb? That's so dumb. Yeah, it's so dumb. Turd. Yeah, it's like, just... We should, we should, oh, that and a Cinco. We, there should be a law against throwing weightless Cinco's. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and like, that, I would not. I, I don't I know how many, co- like, when I was fishing FLW Tour, I don't know how many co-anglers caught giants out the back of my boat just shoot like my wife when she's like hey you didn't catch him she's like just throw a cinco <laughs> <laughs> she, she'll did, go out there and she'll just cast a sucker out there and just like and sh- <laughs> she's real on man and just like oh my goodness hey i mean it's just it's that's probably the the net rig's pretty goofy like but a cinco was the og it's it's shocking. It, yeah, it, it's it's absolutely the Ned rig. I don't know why it works so well. First but it, it was the pre-rigged worm, then the Senko, and now the Ned rig. Jack can't watch out for that plow boy. I'll tell you. I'll tell you guys. I gotta tell you this one. So I I, I was I was fishing Batoka, mm-hmm. and I I remember. I, so I got a buddy of mine. He, you'd love him. He's freaking hilarious. He's almost. It's funny. He's is you guys, but <laughs> he's not quite there. He, well, he feels like you know he's oh, he, you know whatever. So anyway. He calls me up. The day one, I had two bass. It's like a state finals tournament or something. And he sits there and calls me up, and I had two fish. I was like 50th place. He calls me up. He goes, two fish? Two fish? I could have caught more off the dock with a pre-rigged worm. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thumbed you. He thumbed you. He have caught more off the dock with a pre-rigged worm. He's so mad at me. The next day, I ended, up, I ended up making the. I ended up catching like the biggest bag day too. I was so mad. I went to bed. I retired. I said, screwed. I'm gonna catch him. I ended up making the, making the cut. But regardless, he's always. He always just told me. He's always told me how it is. And that's like <laughs> he, he keeps it. He keeps, there's those guys in your life that no matter what your buddies. They're gonna tell you how it is. He's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is funny though. I think that sometimes when I'm having a tough day, you go to a dock. I'm like, I could go to that dock. I'd catch two off that dock if I was standing on it. 
<laughs> and then you can't catch more than two in a boat run all That's ridiculous. It's stupid. That, it's, oh, oh, it's... I got one more. Or this is a more house story. I'll tell you one last <laughs> I got because it's funny. So I'm sitting there after I won won the All America, won the cup, and I was having a couple. You know, I had a good year. I'd come back home and I'd fish like tournaments on moors and guys and stuff. And I'd figure out a technique, and I still want to win. You know, I don't want to. Yeah. So I figured out how to catch them on on a on a hard head offshore on moors really well. And so we were catching them really good, like offshore, and I'm catching them pretty good. And 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 I, I and so Greg, he's one of them dudes. He just can't he can't help but tell everybody what's going on. He's like, man, you need to throw this hard head with this biffle bug, and you need to drag it around and reel it around and catch him. He just had to do it. And I got mad at him. I got mad at him so mad. I said, dang it, Greg. I said. I said, I don't care about the money. I just said, I don't want to tell them guys that deal. That's a sneaky deal. You that damn that that's, it, but nobody had thrown it a lot out there. Exactly. See, hey, and you he didn't even. Me up. He calls me up and he was he he had he went through an ink 12 pack probably or so. Probably <laughs> at that point in time. He called me up and he goes, kid. He's like, buddy. He, he's just as genuine as can be. He's like, man, I, I know you're mad at me for telling him about that deal. He says, he goes, but them dudes are your buddies, man. Them dudes are your friends. He goes, you ain't, he said, they think you're the next Kevin Van Dam or something. You ain't shit to me, but those guys <laughs> think you're good. Nice. <laughs> those guys That's awesome. think you're cool. See, hey, dude, campfire <laughs> stories are fun. You didn't even want to come over. That's exactly right. Yeah, so, I, yeah, damn. Yeah, that's how it was. So I, I, I'll never forget that. So I go, you ain't shit to me, but that's what you guys think you're somebody. <laughs> oh, let, let's go on to the serious stuff. All right. Um, do you believe in mythological creatures? Uh, not. I'm, I'm on the. I'm on. The, I'm, I'm gonna say negative, Ghost Rider. Bigfoots, chupacabras, aliens. I mean, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay, okay. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna give the aliens thing. Yeah, I, I could see, I could see, like, I could see. I mean, you gotta think about it. Like, I, I do think there is, you know, you look at outer space and how big it is, and then we're just one little blip on the Milky Way. I mean, it'd be hard not to think there's something. There's more out there. I mean, it would, yeah, it'd be hard for me. Like, yeah, there's like so. Are you telling me that there's actually another planet that we can catch bass on because this is what i'm excited I, about I'm, I'm hoping so that yes. would that would be pretty the, awesome ulti- like just ultimately warp for like warp warp speed uh, to wherever that is and <laughs> there's 20 and 30 40 pound bass swimming around over there large mouth they just mutant bass <laughs> like they're, they're, they're gonna have all these baits up there yeah. that we've never seen exactly. we could bring back exactly and destroy yeah. the universe exactly what? yeah, I don't yeah. What that means that's what i was thinking <laughs> hey um what uh, what year did you stop believing in Santa Claus? What do you mean? Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> What's the most money you ever got from a tooth fairy? You know, like, you know, probably <laughs> like uh, I mean, I still do. No, um, no, probably like uh, probably when I was like like thirteen years old, probably ten years old, probably ten years old. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I, I held on to that one pretty long. I did too. I did too. It was extra <laughs> fishing tackle. Was... I was like, I swore that Santa had jumped on my roof one day, and I, I, I swore <laughs> he was there, but. I think it was just some 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 name. I don't know what it was. What's name. what's the yeah. most joy you have ever experienced in your professional bass fishing career? Um, n- no doubt the All American. The yeah. All American. All American. Like, Great answer. That was it. That was that was a pretty pretty crazy moment. I'm you know, I had my mom, and my dad, my family. It's pretty cool. It was pretty special, man. Especially at that age, dude. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> that's it's pretty awesome. Hey, have you ever been arrested? Never have. No, close. You ever been close to being arrested? You know what? Not no, no. I you're a I, good um, kid. No, I, I I don't feel like I've ever been that close to being arrested. I got arrested once, dressed as the mighty Thor, and my date was Snow White. <laughs> I'll tell you sometime about that off, off the air. It was a Halloween party. <laughs> oh, Happened yeah. in Normal, Illinois, Bloomington, Normal. But never, there you go. Yeah, I, I lived to tell about it. Normal and normal. I, I lived to tell about it. <laughs> hey, uh, we you ever? I mean, you spent some time in in the old saloon here and there back back in the day. And there's an old bar game that uh, that a lot of people play, and uh, we play a variation of it here. And the bar game is uh, it, it's Mary. Kill. Do you know that game? No. Uh. Okay, so it, it's basically uh, the 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 game is real easy. It's called 
marry, kill. That's what it is. Okay. So, so but on this game, or on this show, we play the game as um, you pick someone. You know, we know you're a happily married man, so this is all fictitious, obviously. Okay, absolutely. Uh, obviously fictitious here, no disrespect intended. So <laughs> the, uh, out of out of three, um, out of these three women that I named to you, you have to pick one to go fishing with, okay, one to fictitiously marry, and one to throw out of the boat. Okay. Okay. So it's basically fish marry kill. Yeah, fish marry kill. Fish marry. Kill. Yeah. Stop. Something like that. Instead, <laughs> shotgun. Oh, you said, I got it. Yeah, Man. now you know the game. I didn't say Kim. I didn't know what you were talking about. I got you now. Okay. Got it. So, so one of these people you're going to go fishing with. One, yep, I one, got it. Okay. So your choices are um, are Scarlett Johansson, okay, Shelly Sanders, or Kim Kardashian. So one of them you're throwing out of the boat, one of them you're marrying, and one of them you're going fishing with. It's the fictitious dating game. Scarlett Johansson? Huh? Mary. Mary and Scarlett. Mary and Scarlett. Shelly, I'm I'm going to fish with. We'll go fishing. Okay. And then we're just going to drop off O'Kim. Kardashian's getting that badunkadunk. Straight down. She'll be floating. Just, that's what I'm going to roll with. Sinking like a stone. Okay, real good. Okay, and, and I would have been the, sa- the same deal. I was I was with you 100% on that one. Does Shelly fish? Does she fish? Um, uh, Shelly does not. I don't think. She I does, don't think so. She does an amazing used car commercial, though. I've seen that one. I've seen that one, Yes. Oh. It's, a, it's riveting, actually. Well. <laughs> I, I, I love it. <laughs> hey, who's the commissioner of, of the or the tournament director for for MLF? Or Steve for, Corp. Steve Corp. Oh yeah, well I was talking to him earlier. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, me and yep. him. Yeah, we came up with new rules for you for the rest oh. of the season. Yeah, okay, it's here. it's a little game and it's going to be for all you Bass Pro Tour competitors, but it's a little mix. It's a little audible here, and you're only allowed to bring four rod and reel combos with you in the boat. For Ooh. the rest of the year. It's called three on deck and one on hand. Three Ooh, on deck like, and one on hand. I like hand. that. I okay, like that. Okay, so pick your combos. Pick your poison, sir. What are those three rod and reel combinations that you're going to use? For so I'm going to have a buzz bait. Buzz bait on what? What's the rod and reel? A buzz bait, seven foot, medium heavy, signature series rod, duck it. Okay. I'm going to have that with some 20 pound suffix fluorocarbon because I do throw fluorocarbon on a buzz bait as there well. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw a, we were just talking about it, a wacky worm. Okay. So Hugan Bates, Lunker Log, wacky style, like a Nico hook, I, where I can switch it up a little bit. I can put a Nico weight in it, or I can just keep it wacky style. So that's my two. I'm going to throw a half ounce jig, a little bandito bug on it. I okay. That, you can't go wrong with a half ounce jig. You fish deep, fish shallow, you can swim it, and do all your stuff. Anything. And then last but not least, I'm going to go with a DT6. I'm going to go with DT6. Call it good. Fish catcher. I, there's four baits right there. I feel pretty confident going anywhere in the country. Boom. And, that, and, and it's right there. I mean, and, and you, you covered the gamut right there. If you can't catch them on that, you're in trouble, Jacob. I'm, I'm hoping so. I mean, I, that's what I would roll with. And just sort of, you know, I mean, you know, you got to roll with it. And, and, and speaking of roll with it. It's our final game show section of the night. This is mega game show within game show segment. We're mm-hmm. like ha- we're hammering it here. I'm, I'm, mar- I'm, to this. I'm marking dots on on Google Earth right now in my mind. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing. This is called "What's on Your Mind." Okay? okay, so you basically tell us the first thing that pops in your mind. Okay, and I'm gonna put my glasses on because this is intense. It's time for What's On Your Mind with Bass Pro Tour champion, Jacob Wheeler. Jake, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase and you tell us the first thing that pops in your mind. Jake, what I need you to do is combine a bait color and a famous movie title to create a dirty movie title. So combine it. Here's an example. Um, Dirty Sanchez in the Temple of Doom. So what you're doing is combining uh, a bait color with a movie color to create a movie title that sounds dirty. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. 
I'm gonna go. No, you should not. No, I'm gonna do it. Dang it. Dang it? No, 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 no. You took the bet. Why'd you take the dang dirty Sanchez? No, I know. Well, well I'm up. sorry. I don't know. It's just the first one that came to uh, mind. Is it. Is it uh... you pick any color. You can make any color. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 you can no, pass no, and go back. Tramp, tramp stamp. And Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Lord of the Rings tramp stamp. <laughs> and the tramp stamp. <laughs> I was thinking tramp stamp in Seattle. Uh, I was, yes. I know. Give me a hard time. I, was I know. Thinking, I apologize. Over here. I, I was thinking, thinking about it because it's really like, I'm like, man, come on. Tramp stamp it's in the Sorcerer's Stone. That. That's actually what I was going to say. Dirty chances in the, in the Temple of Doom. That would have been phenomenal. But <laughs> you just, you, I, I'm disappointed in that, Pat. I mean, you just took the best one. I'm just sorry. Like that. You know, I'm the host. He, he left Donkey Punch Pretty Woman. I did. <laughs> I, I mean, did leave that. Did. Yes, that is true. And I left. Uh, that was a solid one. That one was there. And I left Tony Danza, who's the boss. I left that. <laughs> <laughs> I left that one, too. We'll leave that there, though. So if you were in a rock band, what would the name of the rock band be, and who would be some professional bass fisherman that would be in that band with you? The, the, I'm going to say the name of the, um, Hey, I'm going to say the Ding Team. The Ding Team? <laughs> ding Team. And I'm, I'm going to have, I'm gonna, you know, it's going to be the band of... Myself, uh, Mark Daniels Jr., he's going to be on the drum. Yes, love it. Adrian Navina would be up there on the mic, rocking hard in D.C. Um, I don't know. D.C. could just, you know, he, he might roll with it as well. He might he might just be on bass. Tambourine. Bit, you know, he just switch, he'd switch it up a little bit. I see you guys like as a boy band, like doing boy band moves and stuff. Dude, we just like, ding, team's back. All right. That's, that's like, right. That's, there you go. <laughs> Uh, that's the whole thing. Throw some boys got back in the day. What's the dumbest invention in bass fishing? The dumbest invention in bass fishing. Um, the dumbest invention in bass fishing. That's that's a tough one right there. I'm gonna say a. Yeah, that's a tough one. Wonder bar I, soap. I, I really, that stupid wonder bar soap. Bass fishing. Yeah. Like for me is 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 it like like for me because I dis, I dislike it is the dang as the dang sinko. Like I said, the stanko. I, they caught so many bass, but yet I just like I'm anti. I'm, I just know how many bass have gotten caught. <laughs> it's I, I you know I kind of agree with that a little bit. It's dumb. I. It's a love hate. It hurts when I have to throw that. It's a love hate relationship with that thing. It, it does hurt. Okay, here's a thinker. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. This is a thinker. The plastic worm is to a creature bait as a hollow-bodied frog is to a blank and a flipping jig is to a blank. A plastic worm is to a creature bait as a flipping jig is to a blank as a... Is a flipping jig is to a... So a flipping jig is to a blank, and a soft body frog is to a blank. Yes, yep. as just as the yep. plastic worm is to a creature bait. Where's your mind? What are you thinking? I'm just gonna go. A soft body, a soft body frog is to a, a. You had it. You were thinking it. I heard, I know it. Is to a buzz bait. It to I it no. to a dang. Hold up. No, you're it's there. The like jig is to a drop shot. Give it to him. Give, sure. give it to him. We'll give him that one. It, this is a, this is what I had. Okay, I had plastic worm is to a creature bait. As so a, like what? So what? Okay. As it. a hollow body frog is to a buzz toad, as a flipping jig is to a swim jig. A plastic worm. See, if you'd have thrown the the, the the is the flipping jig to a swim jig, then I could have rolled with the soft body frog to a buzz toad. But see, the, the worm, plastic worm, to a to a creature bait, that's two different things. Yeah, I, I gotta I, agree I, with Jacob on this. No, one. Yeah, like, I, like, this is what you, do. you can't have contestants like, make up the, their own answers. The plastic crawl. The plastic crawl is to a creature bait, maybe. He, like, it would be you're more, correct. I mean, more. 
maybe. I like, already gave him the wrong answer, even or the right answer, even though he was wrong. Hey. I'm just being nice to our hey, guests. If the guest can't make up his own rules. I have to be nice to the guest. It was my fault, so I apologize. I, I'm horrible at these Let's games, not. Next time you're on the show, don't do this again, okay? Please. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm. I, I'm not. I don't have to make a living by by answering these questions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> what's a fishing term? that a non-fisherman would just not understand. Horny toad. A what? Horny toad. A, a honey, a what? A horny toad. A horny toad. Oh, yeah. I thought horny you said toad. honeysuckle. A non-fisherman would never understand that. No, like, they they would think of, of a, a ride at Disneyland. Fifth, a horny toad? Yeah. Captain. Uh, so I would say like, like a fat bag. I would say... Yeah, like even even potentially the ding thing. Yeah, that, ding. Yeah, yeah. Fat sack. Fat Deep sack. Cranky. Fat sack, fat bag, big um, bang. I, I got to get all up in that honey hole. You know what I mean? Yep. You, that's the, another one. They wouldn't know what the hell was going on. Jacob Wheeler, you nailed the multiple game show segment. Just, you are a true wanna, champion. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> You did it. It's like eight game shows. Yeah, he did better than um, Aaron Martin's. It's the game show network. Aaron would still be talking that. Oh, gosh, yeah. When Aaron, Aaron would still be talking. I'm going to try to make sure I get a little charger right here for you all. <laughs> hey, um, dude, I, I just want to say thanks. I want to say thank you to you for, for coming on this show and and, and, and clowning around with us and, and talking some seriousness and just uh, sharing this passion for bass fishing with us, dude. I appreciate you guys having me on, especially fellow Hoosiers. You know, like, hey, look, y'all, y'all uh, lived a little bit. You live a little further north than I did, but it's <laughs> yes, we do. Time. We're all the same. So that's, um, man, we we have a good time every time I come on, man, I get to hang out with you guys. It's got to win a little bit more often, so that way I can come on a little bit more. Uh, well, that's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe one day. I got to keep it going. Tell Adrian <laughs> to win something too, would you? I'll tell him. Hey, okay. Hey, don't hold your breath, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. We you know. You can do it. Trust me. It's coming. You can do it all night long. You know. <laughs> hey, uh, anything you want to say to your to your fans or your sponsors before we get out of here, Jake? I mean, I, I, um, I'll tell you what. All, all my Hoosier, fellow Hoosiers out there, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys so much, man. I think that uh, even though I live in Tennessee, I obviously – um, have a have a lot of respect for the Hoosier State, of Ohio, the, of the whole state, the whole all the fisheries. A, a big thank you because obviously I couldn't be here without uh, without you know I've, learned, I've been been taught so much from so many different people over the years, and um, I think that that was a big reason why I'm where I'm at. You know, it's it's tough. Everybody talks about how tough fishing is in Indiana, and those tough times allow you to sort of get to that point where uh, when it gets tough in those fishing tournaments, man, you just sort of think back. I'm like, man, I could be on Monroe right now sitting here wishing for a dang bite. Exactly. Two bites on the nerve. So Makes you appreciate Chickamauga, doesn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. When you go out there and catch 60 in a day, you're like, man, this is, this is uh, yeah, it's not too bad. So, I, I you know, that's something big. Obviously, all my sponsors, it, it's um, – Everybody you know follows me on, on on my YouTube and on on my Instagram and Facebook. You guys know who they are, so I'm not going to get on a big long list. But I I truly appreciate them and, and all they do, and especially the companies that we talked about earlier, your Apple's, the companies that have been with me from the get go. Man, that's um, that's a big deal, you know. And, and and more so, I appreciate it now than I ever had before. Um, and give me that opportunity to, to to chase my dream and be able to fish professionally. Uh, awesome, man. And and again, we are sincerely we're proud of you, man, and your progression. Your not only your bass fishing career, but your beautiful wife and your lovely child, and just the way things are going well for you in life, dude. We're we're really happy for you, sincerely. All right, you boys. You boys don't get in too much dang trouble tonight. If I was there, I'd go hang out with y'all. <laughs> get too much trouble down there at the local pub. I'm boring, believe me. Now these guys on the yeah. other hand, that's <laughs> yeah, fun. I just the truck is loaded. I'm just the loud one. I, I'm the one that gets us in fights. That's all. <laughs> hey, but thank you so. Yeah, hey, speaking thanks, of man. Indiana guys, you know who's coming on next? Um. Uh, Brad Zollers from Bite Me uh, Tackle. No way. You, yeah, he Brad. Brad, I said, what's up? He makes some really good stuff. Yeah, sure, he just came aboard as a sponsor of the show, and he's given a hella mega giveaway right after you're done here. Hey, they make some good stuff. There ain't no doubt about that. They're and, always thinking. They're and, good thinkers. And actually, you and Adrian, we just entered your names 
uh, into hey, the drawing. Tell Brad he needs to send me some stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get a few things from it. Bass Galaxy, give it up one more time for Jacob Wheeler. Congratulations, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, Thanks, man. Bro. That's Jacob Wheeler. That right there. Boom. Another, another amazing uh, time. Yeah, man. With Jacob Wheeler. I'm glad that I called him up. It's been a while, man. You know? Yeah. And that, that, um, that was satisfying. Crushing it. Huh? That was fun. He is crushing it, dude. Yeah. He's absolutely crushing it. What do you want to do, Gingy? You wanna, are we taking a break, or would you like to come right through with, uh, with Bite Me Tackle? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's get it on. All right. So coming up now, uh, and hopefully you have done this, you have liked and shared the live Facebook feed. Yeah. It, you have 10 seconds. It now gives you the chance, the possibilities to win... The Mega Hella Get the Lead Out Pack from this guy right here. Give it up for Brad Zollers from Bite Me Tackle. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. How are you doing, Pat Ryan, guys? Hey, I'm doing good, good man. How are you doing? Hey, we're doing good. You guys had an awesome show there Th with Jacob. Thank you. He said to say Thank hi you. to you. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Awesome. He said to send him some jig heads. Uh, we can do that. <laughs> we can do that. Hey, well, first off the bat, I just want to uh, to publicly thank you here for, for coming aboard and supporting this show, man. It means a lot to us. Yes, thank sir. you so much. Thank uh, you. The boys and I are excited to do that. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. And, and um, and the, and the coolest thing that I've found out, I mean, not that you just make amazing stuff, but Dude, you. you got it just as bad as we do. You're a bass head. You are, I mean, you you got it bad, buddy. You're that's all you you're consumed by it, aren't you? It's uh, it's awesome. Yes, we love it. <laughs> uh, is that is that where well, there's time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. is, is that is that where uh, bite me tackle came from? Were you just making a lot of stuff for yourself and said, "I got too much here. I got to sell it." No, I, actually, Greg, my oldest son, and I purchased the company. It was already established for 10 years. Um, he was on their pro staff. He and I took off with it, and it's grown every year. My youngest son, Sean, helps. Um, it's growing more and more every year. It's fantastic. It, it sure wow. isn't, and you have to look at it. A lot of times you've heard that old adage, Brad, in, in fishing, that the weakest link between you and success is your fishing line, right? You've heard that. Yeah. You've heard yeah. that. You know, uh, you and your catch or you and success. The weakest link is your fishing line. But a lot of times there was a shift in the industry where terminal tackle was kind of like the um, it was kind of like the bad cousins table at the wedding. Do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> it's like uh, people didn't pay a lot of attention to it. You know, a jig head's a jig head. A, a, um, a worm weight's a worm weight. A, a worm hook's a worm hook. But That's right. as we progressed as anglers and technology progressed, now enter very specific and, and, and attention to detail, well-built terminal tackle. Right? Absolutely. It's a progression, and that's and, and and bite me falls into that. They fall right into that progression. Yes, you know we we try to keep up with, you know, coming up with new products, making you know using the best hook we can. Um, it's you know it's great. We use a lot of Gamakatsu hooks. Mostly everything we use, we've got some exclusive hooks that uh, only we can get from them. So wow. that, that's a good advantage, and it's a fantastic hook. It beats the gold hooks on those first gets it tubes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you had to just re be real easy with them because you don't want that hook to straighten out. Yeah, yeah that's right. Back yeah. and forth, back and forth. You could bend yeah. those back back into place about six times six before times they broke. Before they snap. Yeah. yeah. Before they snap. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, but bringing back to it, it's like, Okay, so you set out. You've bought this company that's an established company, and now you've you've bought this company because you saw the potential, obviously. Here is yeah. quality terminal tackle that's going to help you catch more fish, and you get to own the company. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a blast. <laughs> that's, it that's is. All, that's all right. I mean, and, It's exciting. It really is. And probably one of the... The most famous, I, I don't know if the, this is a strong statement, but one of the most famous baits to come. Where, are you at the haunted house? Where are you? It sounds like a no, rooster. Yeah. Is it a rooster? 
I'm not sure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. one of the most famous baits to come out of Indiana has to be the uh, the stupid tube, right? No doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. That it rig, works. And uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling like an idiot now. Who's the guy that uh, was throwing it in the classic? Um, Terry McWilliams. McWilliams. Thank you That's very right. much. Okay. And, and I mean, and everybody in Indiana. And started, Ohio. And Ohio. And <laughs> Illinois uh, are, are, are skipping stupid tubes. And, 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 yeah. who, and who makes the finest? Stupid tube head before you even owned the company, right? Bite me tackle. They were the starter of it. Absolutely, the, the, the starter of it. That's. I mean, that's yeah. when I first heard of bite me, and, and then um, all of a sudden here comes this big mouth guy from Michigan. I can't. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Z- Zarktona. Z- Zark. Zark. Zark-tona? Yes. Yes. And yeah. he's got this giant tube jig head. It looks like yeah. a freaking alien. Oh right? yeah. And 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 that and there's the evolution of the big dude. Everyone owns a big dude, don't they? Oh yeah, that's probably the one we make the most of. No <laughs> Is doubt about that it. the number one seller, the big dude? Um, that or the shaky head. Okay, absolutely. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, and the bottom line is, each one of your jig heads. People say a jig head's a jig head. It's not. They no. all serve purposes. Okay, they absolutely. all serve different purposes. The big dude. The the your of of course the. Uh, you know your regular stupid tube head, the regular shaky heads, as you talked about. But yeah, what are ball some... head shaky heads, finesse shaky head, they, all, all of them? They they all yeah. serve a purpose. <laughs> what what's what's some of your go to ones, your special ones to you? Man, I'm I'm the stupid tube lover. I, I like the four aught. Um, it's hard to put down when it works so well. Sure, sure. But the swim bait head we've got, the Buster, that is. Um, that's probably becoming one of the next number one sellers. That's a, that's an amazing head too. And Ryan, I had told you had given me some of those yeah. when we were out fishing. That was the first time I got to throw those things, and 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 it, and it's an awesome uh, swim bait head. And as you and I had the discussion, it's a great swim bait head for more so open water. Okay, mm-hmm. and I'm talking yeah. swim baits like Kitex. Let's just say Kitex. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, finesse, finesse style swim. Bait. Whatever. Yeah. It's a damn Kitex. So I mean, whatever you <laughs> yeah. call it, just like a Senko, whatever worm it is, you know, just yeah. like a Coke is a is a any kind of pop somewhere in the South. You know, give me an orange Coke, <laughs> give me a red Coke, give kind me a Coke you want. It's a, it's the same thing. <laughs> so I that's mean, that's right. So so what I was getting at that swim bait head, great for open water. Now you go to your the hunter head. For example, the round ball, which is basically a, a shaky head or a skipping head with a weed guard, but it also is a perfect Kitek head, too. You, it you, is. I it mean, works great. You got tons of guys doing that. A lot of pros are using that. It's, um, you know, they do the, exactly what you're saying. They're putting a swim bait on it and just going to it's a go to bait for them that works. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I've been doing since I got some stuff from you uh, over there in Kokomo, is that uh, that jackpot head. That's, yeah, that's, that's new. The, that's yeah. the Ned rig. The Nedler, yeah. The Ned head. I've yeah. been throwing swim baits on that thing a lot. And is I, that I right? really like okay. it. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, I, it, for some reason that shaped head gives it a little bit different rock. It gives that swim okay. bait a little bit different rock. Yeah, it. and uh, I've been liking it on the big lake here. He just gave it's his secret really away, Brad. Hey, I hear that. <laughs> only, he only has one size, though. That's it's true. Kokomo show, I got the mold done for the eighth ounce like a day before the show. I threw a bunch of them together real fast, yep. and that was the introduction of it. So we do have a couple more sizes now, and it's it's a good seller, too. Yes. And and again, you know, I hate to sound like a broken record, but quality is so important to us fishermen. It, it's if we're I don't think there's I don't know. We we pay we pay more attention to it than we should probably and that sounds like a counter a contradicting statement, but quality is all you're going to find with the bite me baits. That's it. The bite me tackle. The the Thank you. I we mean, try to we try to achieve that. And, and you sure do. What's that what's in the works? What do you got new? What's up your sleeve? Um, we got a swing head we're going to be coming out with here shortly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, I've got a bigger swim bait head that's going to be, it's going to be about an ounce and an eighth. The ledger. Um, I got gotcha. I've got the mold. I've just got to get the mold made for it. 
Uh, but we're at our busy time in the season right now. It, it, wow, it's unbelievable, the calls. It's it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Just slinging it, lead. This is the time of the year. <laughs> the, yes. You're getting yeah. the lead out. Getting the lead out, as they say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the big dudes are going fast. <laughs> That's a lot of lead, dude. Yeah, and, and we didn't mention, too, it, a lot of these baits you have, you have rattle rattle options with them as well, which is kind of yeah. unique, especially like a rattling, shaky head. You don't see that much. And, uh, yeah. God, that, that could really help in a lot of situations, especially, you know, yeah. when JP's trying to throw a shaky head around flipping cover and stain water. With four-pound line. <laughs> With rattles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, could yeah, help and, you know, any, anybody gets any questions, look us up on at info at bitemetackle.net or, you know, give us a call. Look for us in your local stores. Um, we're, you know, we're getting in more stores every day, so. Nerd. That's awesome, too. BiteMeTackle.net, the complete line of products. And tonight, Brad, you're giving away the uh, the, the Mega Hella Bite Me Tackle giveaway pack here on Straight Cast. What's Super that consist of? Absolutely. Fantastic. Let's yes. do that. What's yeah. it consist of? What do we got? Well, you know, we'll give uh, $50 of somebody's choice of what they want. We'll throw some stickers, T-shirt in. Uh, we'll get them fixed up. And a new car, right? A brand new well, car. Maybe, maybe, maybe a small one, sixty four <laughs> scale. Pinto. Yeah, yeah. An, old, an old Pinto. We'll get. We'll yeah, get there you go. A Chevy Vega, something like yeah. that. <laughs> something like that. A Fiesta. So, uh, JP, Absolutely. how are you doing over there? Are you Are you getting close? Uh, I, I did it. Oh, you got five minutes ago. Oh, J, JP's all over it. So, <laughs> you're well. Let's do the big announcement, okay? JP's going to make the announcement, Brad. But, but uh, okay. let's. Well, let's well, let's do some medieval announcement music. Go ahead, Brad. Announce it. Tell them who the tell them who it's gonna be. Set it up. Set it up for us. Uh, I can't see it. Uh. <laughs> it's okay. So the big winner. Okay. okay. Give, us, give us the give us one more time of music. I love the music. That's good. That's cool. All you gotta say is the winner is Brad, and then JP's gonna say the, the okay. name. The winner is Ryan Milford. Ryan Milford. Mil- okay. Milford. 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 Ryan Milford. Congratulations. You won the uh, the Bite Me Tackle Hega Mel- Mega Hella Get the Lead Out giveaway. That's there awesome. You go. So should should the uh, should they just message you on the Facebook? Is that the best way to handle it or Yeah, they can do that or email me. Um, and we'll get it set up with them, get them some stuff out they get using. There, there it is. So uh, basically send yourself uh, your information to the Bite Me Tackle Facebook page, and you better give it a like uh, while you're there, as well as the Bite Me Tackle Instagram page, right? Fantastic, fantastic. Boom. Brad, thank you so much, dude, for, yeah, thanks, for coming man. aboard uh, the well, Straight Cast and coming well, on the we're show. Ex- we're excited to look for you around and watch your shows. Uh, fantastic job, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Give you. it up for Brad Zollers. Bite Me Tackle right there. Awesome. Boom, Have there it is. everybody listening. Take care. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. There it is right there. Another action-packed, boom, show. What was the guy's name? Milford? Ryan Milford. Ryan Milford. Where is he from? I have no idea. Boston, Mass? New Milford. (laughs) He's a... I don't think he's still watching, so. Oh, then he didn't win. Someone else? The winner of the Bite Me Tackle package is Pat Renwick. You... Yeah, he won. Uh, that, guy, won. that guy. That guy. That guy can't win. <laughs> Sam got locked in the meat locker. <laughs> Ryan Milford. <laughs> uh, done. What's a Milford? I don't know. <laughs> I know a new Milford. Uh, there by Rockford. Hey, Andy, play that Stray Cast song. That, that Stray Cast theme song. How do you drown a Milford? You hear that? That's Ryan on drums. You hear him? You hear the, wait, listen for this cymbal crash right here. Wait. That was Ginger. That was Ginger. Now listen to this. That's me singing. But what you don't know is JP is actually holding me on his shoulders during this entire song. But what's more impressive is that he's also holding Larry Kyleman on top of his shoulders during the creation 
of the Stray Cast theme song. Listen. You can hear him holding. Sing it with me, guys. Come on, sing it. You're the, sing you're it. the singer. The That's why I played the drum. Come on, sing it, guys. Let's take a Stray Cast. Ah, yeah, we're going to fish it out. I forgot my own words. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in tonight to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. This is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. The guy over there is JP High. That guy is Andrew Ellenberger. Larry Kyleman does our iTunes. Subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And as Andy would say, don't ever look a gift whore in the mouth. I'm Pat Renwick. We're off next week. We'll see you the following. Peace, best galaxy. Pete Klusik, double punta.